If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hi, Sal. Uh, in this motherfucking episode. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Of swearing. Mind Pump. For we, the first 59 minutes. We got uh, Taylor made in the house Justin, and Douglas in the house. Adam Taylor. You have as many nicknames as me, man. Douglas. Getting out of control. And I do our introductory <laughs> conversation before we get into the questions. We start off by talking about the Viore podcast hard event last night. Damn. Epic. We it were was electric. We were touched in places yesterday that... Felt real good. It was we, a nice. It was it. a good, good, a good event. <laughs> uh, by the way, we have got a hookup for all of our listeners for Viore. Now, Viore clothing is Taylor basically said it's the sexiest stuff you could put on your body. True. If you go to Viore clothing, let me spell that out for you. It's V U O R I clothing dot com forward slash mind pump. We're going to give you a full twenty five percent off your full order. Uh, it's a special offer. Just Get for geared up, man. It's right. awesome stuff. Then we talked about our tour of the Organifi headquarters. We actually went in there, looked at their sales process, interviewed uh, Drew uh, Cannoli. Holy cannoli. He's, uh, he's a, is, he, is he a paisano like me? He he's has got to be with be. a last name like that. Yeah, yeah, of We're also sponsor, sponsored by Organifi. If you go to Organifi. sponsored by them. Sponsored. <laughs> and we're sponsored by Both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two of those things. They're, they're paying us double <laughs> for double the commercials <laughs> double you're going to get in this one. You're on a roll today, Sal. That's right. That's a, that's Find out why, Taylor, <laughs> why Taylor's hair looks so luxurious. <laughs> yeah. uh, so if you go shiny. to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MindPump, you'll get a big discount. We talked about Taylor's impression of our fans. He's actually attracted to most of you. We talked about the risk of telling the truth, the power of being real and truthful, gaming the biggest loser and other contests, the objective truth movement, and our upcoming mere live podcast hard event. It's going to be fire. Oh, you guys better make it to that one. Uh, there, there's some slots available. Sign up for that shit. Go to www.mindpumpmedia.com forward slash tour and sign up. By the way, for that one, you got to put the triple W in the beginning because I have no fucking idea why. It just doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work otherwise. We don't know why. Yeah. Uh, technology. Then we get to the questions. The first question was, if you want to compete in both bodybuilding and powerlifting, which one should you do first? Is there a benefit? Great question. Good question. I liked it. The next question was, for online training coaching, what are our thoughts on high ticket coaching? Like, Do we think it's a better to go with the high cost, low volume approach or the high volume, low cost approach? Which Hang one? in there, Jonathan. It does take about 45 minutes, but we do finally answer this yeah, question. Yeah, we do run we circles and <laughs> come back eventually. Act- Excellent. Uh, then the next question, I go off on this one a little bit. You guys kind of let me, which uh, I uh, get a little self-conscious I brought about. you a little soapbox. Yeah. We talk about the victim mentality that seems to be on the rise in society. Somebody asked us what our opinion was on that, um, and I went off for a little while. And then finally, last question, can posing or flexing your muscles help with the mind-muscle connection? You might have heard of the mind-muscle connection uh, from bodybuilders and muscle builders and how important it is to have a good connection to your muscles to activate them when you train them. Can posing or flexing like a douchebag in the mirror <laughs> help you out, Justin? Being a douchebag will help. Can it? Uh, also, uh, we know what's about to happen. It's about to get warm outside. You're going to go outside. You're going to want to take your shirt off or put a bikini on and you're going to want to look fucking sexy. Yeah. You're going to want to look sexy. And part People of looking sexy get laid, Sal. is being lean, fit, and healthy. And a big part of that is nutrition. You got to work out, but you also got to eat right. So here's what we're doing for everybody to help them get ready for the summer. We are going to give you the nutrition components or the guides that we offer that deal with nutrition for free. You're getting two of them. Two, one, two, for free. Wow. You got the intuitive nutrition guide. You're like Santa Claus. the fasting guide (laughs) for free. All you have to do is enroll in a MAPS bundle. Now, bundles are we combine one or, excuse me, two or more MAPS programs together and discount them by over 20 to 30% off. For example, let's say you want an incredible looking 
backside. Taylor, let's say you want a tushy mm. that is sexy. A tushy for pushy. And we're being hypothetical here because we already know that you have one that looks good already. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say you didn't oh, and you that's wanted creepy. He's it been to look you. really fucking good. We have something called the the we have something called the build your butt bundle which includes maps aesthetic, maps anabolic. There is a mod in there to teach you how to activate your glutes and build those glorious Justin looking glutes yeah. that you want. Can you imagine if I he gave had, out my secret. Imagine if he had a Justin butt on his body. Taylor. Oh my God. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be a hit at the party? Yeah. Or let's say you just want to be. Stereo. Let's say you want everything. You want it all. Well, then you do the super bundle, which includes lots of maps programs. It actually takes you through an entire year. You may as well do that. You're going to end up wanting to do all the programs. Anyway. You are. Let's be honest. You get the you get Might the as well save bundle. money. You know, you know what I mean? Because it discounts everything 30%. It's a year of exercise program. You you pretty much can't go wrong with that. Anyway, enroll in one of those bundles. We have not done you wrong. Get the intuitive guide and the fasting guide for free. Or you can even do individual programs and pick out which one you want. If you want to get those programs or if you just want more information... Or if you want to look at some beautiful pictures of Taylor, are there any of your any pictures of you on our, our website? Or am I lying right now? No, no, no. They're You're lying right now. He's whatever. 100% lying. Whatever. We still have a cool website. <laughs> yeah. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. Doug, you think maybe we could do Jeez. this in the jacuzzi sometime? Whoa. Now we're getting, uh, now as we're long as we sexy. don't have the power source I by mean, the water. <laughs> the, I feel like these are long would, enough. I feel like these are long enough. I feel like that's a cool. terrible, that would be a cool. terrible idea. But it's kind of, it'd be kind of cool. <laughs> no like no cool. splashing. Hot tub Sal. time machine. Yeah. yeah. It would I'll, be like hot tub yeah, time I can, machine. I could blow dry my hair who while you, I'm in there, make some toast. Hey, like, who do you <laughs> fucking <laughs> took it? Who do you, who do you think's had the most? Why not? Who's had the most worst ideas in this business? Out of all of in us. In our business? In all of us. Who's the had most the worst ideas? Yeah. Oh, if you can the count most. them all up. Yeah, That's yeah. a tough one, man. Mm. I don't know, man. Because everyone's had some. Yeah. Oh, I can't think of any that I've had, so tell me if I have. Oh, <laughs> I'm not saying I have No, I would say so you're the convenient. winner. I think you're the well, winner. Well, tell me some bad ideas I've had. Mm. Um, I can't see. remember all of it. Like, I remember the porn ads. Yeah, that's see, and that's everybody that's, remembers that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, well, you know. So then I'm just gonna get rolled under the bus. No, it's not about that. I'm just well, saying yeah. it's the, you know, it's uh, I can't remember a lot of these ideas that we've had that were bad because we tend to just forget them. Well, yeah, sometimes, uh, uh, yeah, long. exactly. A lot of times they don't happen, right? A yeah. lot of times we say some stuff and then, but you even you're even good about catching yourself. Sometimes you caught yourself like once or twice last night. You know, the energy's flowing. We're all excited after an event, and it sounds like fucking hey, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do yeah. that. Right? He's yeah. like, well, you know, we'll just Actually, start with this. logistically. Yeah, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> you got, you know what it is. You I, know what? We should ask Taylor. Who's it? Taylor? Have, oh you, gosh, let's hear it, dude. Oh, wow. Who has the worst ideas? Yeah, who's had? The, who's heard. had the most worst <clears throat> ideas? You want to like stack them up? I mean, when you all get riled up, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so it's collectively it's not good oh, every shit. once in a while we got some we got some hitters mm. that's Strat how it works though yeah. right you, you know, gotta kind of exhaust all ideas all possibilities it's a numbers game yeah it's a numbers game. I mean, it is same way i, I got you, you know women you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a numbers thing it's, it's simple it's math that's a strategy you yeah. strike yeah you, you swing a lot i actually had a <laughs> swing all i day. actually had a buddy who literally live by that I, live know, by I had one too I, it's like, real. no serious yeah. he was like serious about it he's like no I know that if I ask 10 girls phone numbers that two of them will say yes you know so I just now yeah. what did he do with the yeses always went yes. for it yes he yeah. played the, he played, <laughs> yeah. he played <laughs> yes. that would be a yes what do they call yeah. that playing craps with your dick yeah, yeah. you're like ah, snake eyes <laughs> let's find <laughs> out uh, gonorrhea <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn it Oh, this one sticks, <laughs> dude. Can I can I just say that that the event yesterday was um, surreal. It was cr- Taylor. Yeah. Good job on putting that together, man. What you? What did you? Was a good job, man. As a as a uh, as well. Okay, here I'll ask you. What was your opinion of the event we did yesterday? Well, what did you think was gonna happen? First of all, honestly, then- I had no, I had no idea. I was, I was just, I wanted people to show up. I think that was the thing that I was nervous the most about. Mm-hmm. Is I was really excited and then i got i started getting nervous and i'm like oh goodness this isn't our in it's not in our backyard i can't like like right. golly gee. i couldn't i can't like yeah. call friends and family like for backup to show up like hey i need you to come i need you to really come through on this one <laughs> you know a <laughs> um, bunch of good looking latin yeah. people walking like, wait in. a minute your name's venezuela your name's venezuela yeah. i this just feel seats back home yeah. you know but like, we're not we're There's not a whole bus that yeah. comes in yeah <laughs> that'd be awesome so i i mean when people started lining up and you could see that there there was a, a crowd then we had the chance going like that was weird dude that was crazy it was, that was like my favorite part it was surreal man it was it was a very strange it's very strange to see because people are talking about how much we've impacted them with our podcast 
And when you're hearing someone, you ever have someone give you a compliment, like come up to you and just say something to your face that just blows you away, like, you're beautiful, or something crazy like that. You're like, oh, well, yeah. um, I guess. I don't Every know. day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. It just, becomes, it just becomes the norm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was, it's, it's a surreal experience, and if, I feel like this crazy sense of responsibility when I hear that, like, whoa, yeah. I got I to gotta do keep doing a good job or do a better job every time I... You know, every time I hear that, it's really, really crazy. But how cool was it? You know, like, what I really wanted to happen is, like, take the magic that happens on the show, like, in the studio. Like, I get to see it, right? Like, just as a byproduct of of working with you guys. But then for, I want people to see, like, it's what you see is what you get, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think with a lot of people, whether it's influencers or YouTubers or people that, you know, that are looked up to, a lot of the time, it's, it's this facade. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like, you do, and then you get bummed out and it's like, no, I think part of, part of why mind pump is, is able to have the, the effect that it has on people is because it's real. It's a, it, it's what they can connect with. And I, and I think being able to, to get outside and, and there's that human factor, you know, like where you get to interact and it's just like mm-hmm. that now you, you can take somebody that might be on the fence and then now, now they're a diehard fan. Mm-hmm. Now that now there's all the way in. You know. Do you do you remember last night when there if there was a moment where you saw like it the experience happening the way you yes. wanted it to happen? Yeah, you do because it became a podcast. Mm-hmm. That, that was the weird part. Like we were up there, I noticed that too, answering questions, and it was when you guys started just riffing together, talking to each other. Yeah, mm. yeah, and um, and that was when it felt because the difficulties we've had in the past, we haven't done a ton of you know events or uh, we've done no events like last like last night, but we. We've done a few where we've talked to crowds or whatever, and it, it, it's difficult to create the same strange, weird chemistry that we have when we podcast with yeah. all these people watching, but it happened last night. I felt that chemistry because we started talking to each other, and there were moments where I forgot there were other people in the room, and that's when we are able to kind of get into our into our flow, and it was was really fun. It was intimate. Yeah. With, there, with there being that many people there, it was... it. Yeah, that's hard to do. Despite the... the Speaker's not working. Yeah, well, <laughs> which I, I yeah. kind of I feel like yeah, way to go, Doug. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like that was such a it was a it was a blessing in disguise. I mean, I really do. I and I remember when I was introing it right when we were first talking. One of the things that I was say I brought up the fact that the speakers weren't working. I thought, but I wanted this to be like a campfire type of setting yeah. always. You know, what I'm saying I, I always wanted it to be like that feel because. My biggest fear of going into this, and it's not a fear, but the thing that I didn't want to happen was I didn't want it to turn into like the you seminar, know, hundreds of seminars yeah. that I've run in my life, where it's, I stand up and I talk. And we can easily go into that. Moment. Oh, easily. I mean, it's easily. Within all of us. But it bores the shit yeah. out of me. Oh, big time. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's. It, it, Plus, we're, I mean, we, we, we've got, you know, good information and stuff. I don't think we're seminar material. You know what I mean? If I'm watching a seminar, like, I want to listen to like. Dom yeah. Diagostino or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, what <laughs> are we going to do? Yeah. yeah. Current research Plus and all the bullet you, points. If you listen to like, you know, more than, you know, 50 of our episodes, what are we going to talk about in a yeah. seminar? You know what I mean? Right. Talk about fasting, fat loss, whatever, you know? Well, that's why I think this dynamic was so awesome and, and, and unique because it was our, our people. Like we finally got to speak in front of people who've listened to us over the years and uh, appreciate our content, and you could totally hear that in the questions they're asking. Oh, us. Dude, did you hear it when I asked when we for, when I, the first time I asked? I said, you know, how many how many of you guys listen to Mind Pump? They laughed at me. Well, I got like a chuck, <laughs> I got like a chuckle, and then everybody raised <laughs> like, their hand. Yeah, 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 right. Like, yeah, whoa, yeah, asshole. I drove the four, first time. I drove four class. hours over here to yeah. see you. Like I don't listen to the show. Like of yeah. course, right? So it was like, okay, this is cool. Yeah. Like this is uh, no, because it, it was cool. We gave we they came in. They got free beer, so we were giving out beer and wine. Yeah, it was a great. They wine. got what was the yeah. name of the wine? Free public. Oh yeah, free public we'll wine. Some, some good can. They got twenty five percent off Viore, which good. by the way, Viore hooked it up. They gave us outfits, and mm-hmm. their shit is, I mean, it's amazing. It's yeah. the quality is ridiculous. Um, but everybody there got a discount on Viore clothing. We gave away a free program to everybody. In the room, that was awesome. That was Adam's idea, and I thought that was a yeah, great idea. That was awesome. Um, Doug, it, Doug wasn't aware of it. He was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like, uh, who's I, puckered. I puckered a little bit. <laughs> 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 Doug puckered. <laughs> yeah. 
Pucker up. No, uh, I thought that's I thought that set the tone, man. It was, you get I, a program. You get once a program. I felt like it was like, like all the Oprah. fans, then it was like, okay, cool. Now we can hook everybody up. Now we're all friends. You're no longer yep. fans. Now yep. let's sit at a campfire. Let's chop it up and talk about all this shit. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I thought that was really cool. And it's a, it's a, it's a great brand to partner with. Good people that were there. The owner showed up and you know hung out with us a little bit, and the staff was awesome. Oh, Joe and his wife are so cool, and man. Yeah. Dude, that that they're, that company's on like the cutting edge of. <laughs> The, the style, the trends, you can feel it, you can see it in the clothes. Oh, they're about to take over, man. There, there really hasn't been good gear like that for men specifically. I can't even think of the last time I, I've known a brand that has taken that kind of quality to men's clothing. You see that with women's clothing mm-hmm. all the time. But well, everybody, uh, everybody that loves Lulu, right, knows that it's it's a badass brand too. But it's so for women. so yeah, it's so good. And they offer men's stuff, but they just are not, not. They don't. They don't. It's hit an it. afterthought, though. Yeah, and you know it feels I mean? like an afterthought yeah. when you shop there. Where when you shop here, it's not like that at all, dude. No, no, no. What I, what I was telling a lot of you know, we had a chance to to mingle with people afterwards, and and how cool is it? We're we're two young brands, right? We're probably each three years into our respective journeys. Can partner up, and everybody that that is Vori customer and supports Vori, they should be listening to Mind Pump. Everybody listening to Mind Pump should be wearing Vori. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's man. just like like we can we can grow together in our respective spaces mm. and and. And it becomes a win-win, bro, which is super neat. Bro, you have a very romantic voice on the podcast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he makes love to the mic a little bit, he's doesn't he? The, he's got that. What did you call him? Super Suavo? It's Super oh Suavo. <laughs> you know, like he, see, everybody turns it on a little. It's funny to... You talk a little bit different. You're not. Like, what? That's just, <laughs> no, you really do. into that. You do. No, I don't oh, it was it. excellent. What you said yeah. was excellent. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But you get all that. Yeah, so anyway. It's just funny because <laughs> you get people <laughs> coming makes on. makes love to the mic, man. He makes love to this thing. Bro, I, I thought. Tell you how it went down. <laughs> bro, there was girl. a so there was a guy. Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, girl. Yeah. Hey, listen, girl. Oh my. listen here. Hey, girl. It's like he turns his R and B. Hey, girl. Oh god. I'm gonna tell you a little story. It's right. like you know, I did. You know, I got a little confused last night because uh, while we're there at the end, we're taking pictures with people, high fiving people. People are asking us more questions. We're mingling and hanging out, and there was a dude in there that was kind of acting like. Almost like he was a bouncer, and he would come up to me like Taylor says, "We need to cut it a little Captain short." Cerveza. <laughs> Captain Cerveza, Captain Cerveza, oh my God. and I'm like, that was my homie. And I'm like, is this? I'm like, is he related to Taylor? Because he kept like, who was that guy, dude? I, I didn't, I didn't know how he was many me like, beers all night. How many? Yeah, how many drinks he may have had? Yeah, until, like, I think halfway he's through. And yeah, I, was I think like, he was, oh, yeah, I, was I think like he was guy. the only one that was really taking advantage of the free alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. open but, bar. Yeah, yeah, most because we did, and we hooked it up. Everybody had free drinks, you know, all night long, and I think that some people. People really took advantage. Yeah. Of He's that. A, he was a nice guy, though. If he yeah, he was right super now. nice. Oh, no, no. Shout out, I forgot your name, but we called you Captain Cerveza. So <laughs> yeah, shout well, out. To you're you, immortalized as Captain Cerveza. That's your nickname. Us, that means so. we like you. No yeah. yeah. badass. And dude. then and then Adam snuck off with a couple fans out the. Out, what'd you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> would you go outside with a couple fans? There? Uh, you know, uh, there's just, you know, it was really funny, dude. That I had this, uh, you know, out of body experience. I was, I literally saw myself as like a 16 year old boy oh, i thought you see you're like floating <laughs> no no these, these guys got me so high dude i, was, <laughs> and, well, I guess you yeah, were <laughs> yeah no i was you know so you went out and smoked a joint with these dudes well you know it, it, first it, of all you're an asshole because you didn't invite us i know thanks a lot dude. yeah I whatever i yeah. know it's fine i was totally feeding my own ego dude i really was I, and i saw it you know it was really funny <laughs> it was really and well, you let I, it happen it yeah like, I, yeah i just let it happen i was like all right this is gonna feel good let me yeah. feed this ego yes, for a minute was, <laughs> tell me how cool i am real quick <laughs> right so we we did and then i was uh there's uh we were sitting out there for i don't know how long we were out there for so would you just go out to their car and there was a three there was a few yeah, of them, we were, right? yeah we were around the corner and stuff we didn't want to be right on the the main public yeah. or the public street or whatever like that so we just walked around the corner and we were just and the the guys the boys were cool man they were just we they wanted to ask questions about the cannabis industry and we we started kind of going down that path and i just i don't talk about that much in depth about that as i did with these three guys so yeah. they got to hear a lot of stuff that I've probably never shared on the podcast or no, no, not a lot of people even know. That's to so ask. Rad. Yeah. And so it was mm. cool. I had a really good time and I was just chatty. Kathy rambling like crazy, you know, and then the phone was vibrating and it, it kind of startled me. And it, I saw all the missed calls from all of you guys. I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> I was like, we got to go back. I over thought you got kidnapped. Yeah, we were worried. Oh yeah. shit! Some fans stole yeah. that. No. No, I knew exactly. What <laughs> took him. <laughs> no, I mean, shit. We had I, a couple times. Taylor had walked up to me, and he's like, "Dude, we uh, were already an hour." 
beyond what we were supposed to be in here. And then he'd come back to me. He's like, bro, we're an hour and a half past what we said we were. He's like, dude, it's two hours past. I don't want to end it, man. We we have to do. And I'm like, (laughs) got to wrap it up. And I remember him saying that to me the first time. And I kind of looked at like how many people were still waiting for each of you, like in line and how many people were waiting still to talk to me. And I go, Think, okay, I don't want to like fucking leave that many no, people right. hanging, right? Let, let me get through, let me get through a majority of these. And so I'm looking and I'm going, okay, I can do that in like 20 minutes or so. And so I'm, so I'm kind of like mm-hmm. trying to write, but then I realized like the, it never stopped. Yeah. You know, it never stopped because it, that it, was the weird part. It's like you start a conversation with somebody, you really get into that conversation with them. And right. then it's like, but there's this weird like time where you're like, well, I guess I got to talk, you know, we got to wrap this up somehow. And then the next person comes and it starts a whole new conversation. And it just like kept happening and happening. It was, it was a really weird kind of thing that like went on. It was what, cool though. What, what were some of the top things that people were asking you afterwards? Mm. I answered a lot. I was telling Katrina just that I was just talking to her, catching her up. And, you know, I, I didn't answer a single fitness question. I know that mm-hmm. uh, nobody asked me. I didn't have to break out my macro, my macro brain and <laughs> yeah. start talking shit like that. Like, I mean, I, maybe a couple, I had a couple, like some common theme stuff or, you know, trainers that were, you know, looking to start their own business. I got that. I got a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so there's a lot of, but then probably the, the next most popular thing was, you know, I talked to a lot of couples Mm. um and relationship and communication um God, we dove yeah, in. i had a few of those relationship questions mainly for me it was the coming out of your shell type question oh, you said coming out of the closet <laughs> <laughs> because i'm an expert <laughs> i mean i could come out of the closet sharp you know like dressed to the nines you would run that industry mm. did would. you did you have a lot of did you have a lot of kids that were coming up to you talking about how they were you know nervous because i didn't get yeah. much of that so yeah yeah it's yeah. interesting that you you got that probably the majority which, oh wow which was really cool because i you know they obviously like everybody has something they relate to each of us you know individually on and i think that was one of them yeah. that, that um people sort of were drawn to me for that aspect of it because I, obviously i'm very you know transparent about how uncomfortable you know everything was in the beginning and how this has been such a process for me of growth and um it's just great to see that that like that resonated mm-hmm. you know with some people I, I was really stoked on that that's awesome i got i had uh like trainers asking me questions i had people asking sales questions like how to how to present their you know their their business better or how to sell their product better and then i had people come up to me and talk to me about politics which was really fucking fascinating i got some deep conversations about markets and economics and you know the concepts the, of liberty and all that kind of stuff which was really cool because those are I mean, those are conversations that I can have for hours because I love to speculate on them and talk about the philosophies and the histories of them. Are there any conversations that you can't have for hours? Yeah. Yeah, I don't no. think... I don't think sports? <laughs> sports? <laughs> yeah, you, oh, there yeah. you go. You shut that down yeah. quick. Yeah. 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 I'll segue that shit real quick. No, my favorite is... is quarterback it, is a lot like... Is it, is it tips, is it tips to spout off inf- you know, information? He's got facts. Yeah, he's got oh, facts. Yeah. He does. Sports facts. He does. He's yeah. like, yeah. How about them Warriors? You have you know? just enough. Went, went in again. Huh? I don't, what do you think about that? You see a jersey name and then you just That Draymond kid doing pretty well, huh? What do you think about that? He's really draining out there. He plays hard. Guys, yeah, plays, plays hard yeah. for a for a for a new player. He does a good job. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was Passes a guess, the ball really way. well. That was yeah. a total guess. Anyway, what you get? What you guys think of the uh, the Organifi tour today? Oh, you know, this was cool. This is the first time we get to meet Drew uh, in person, right? We, uh-huh. We've interviewed him, and um, I was really excited to one see uh, what he was going to be like because I think uh, talking to someone. Uh, via Skype is one thing, but when we get to meet somebody, I get to look you in the eyes. Mm-hmm. Like I, I feel like he I, seems like a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, very, very good dude, man. I, I a good. I mean, uh, big heart. You could tell that he's got uh, a hell of a past. He's got a hell of a story. Um, I wish he told his story better. I think he's got a lot in there that. Um, and I try to get dig in a couple times. They're like, see if I could get him to like release it. And yeah. he, he did little bits of it in mm-hmm. the episode. I mean, I, th- I think it'll be a good episode still, but mm-hmm. I wish you would have elaborated. Yeah. It was a good episode. energy when we walked in there. It was cool to walk into the business because we've walked into other large supplement companies and, you know, you walk in and you see 30 employees, 40 employees, you start talking to people. And, you know, we've, we've all been in, in successful businesses and you can, you can start to get a sense of, of a business when you walk in and start to meet people. And I, we've been in other companies. We walk in, there's 20, 30, 40, 50 employees. You start talking to people. Nobody fucking knows what they're supposed to do. You ask people like, oh, what do you do here? Oh, I, uh, I, I manage this a little bit. And you don't, it, it, you, you don't get that, that feeling that everybody's like driving towards this common goal. 
Whereas when we walk into Organifi, there's charts on the wall, there's mm -hmm. statistics, people are standing to be on the phone, Beast people, trophies. people are super like That's into cool. it, they all know that it, and, cool. and you, you, you can feel the energy in there, and you can see that they're being effective, they're being very efficient and effective. Yeah, everybody's working towards the same objective, and you can see how they all, it's very transparent, the work that's going on. So whoever's doing, making moves, like you're going to see it real time. And I think that that's brilliant. You know, it just brings everybody together and it, it makes it a competitive environment. Which, I, I which fucking everybody, love right? that environment. Yeah. Taylor, you were, you said you, when you were a startup, you said it looked kind of like that too, huh? Yeah. It, it's, it's, you can tell the energy of a sales floor mm -hmm. when you walk in there mm -hmm. and it, it seemed like they were having fun, which is really cool. That's a good sign of good culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sales is an interesting, you have to have a, a certain culture in sales in order to be, I, I, I mean, I, I could recall you, I'm sure Adam, you the same thing and Justin too. You, 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 when the energy is good, sales improve. Mm -hmm. It's different than other aspects of the business. You know, like if you're, if you're a programmer or engineer, some, you just kind of want a quiet, organized, clean environment and people, and that's it. But when it, when it comes to sales and probably marketing too, it's like this, you almost want to feel like you're on a, a on a team and everybody's doing something together and it's motivating and it's there's lots of emotion. Sales involves lots of emotion. You need to have lots of emotion. You need to feel it when you walk into a room. And it's very interesting that it's like that with sales and, and, and not so much in other other aspects well, do you of believe, business. Do you believe that we can transfer emotion? Oh, of course. Right. You've so. got those mirror neurons. No, you see someone. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's exactly why it is. That's why it's so important. It's so important you have that culture if you're going to be really, really successful because people can feel it. People mm -hmm. can feel I don't care how badass your product is or how cool your brand is. Like, if the vibe isn't right or the culture isn't right, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's. I, I think it's very obvious when I walk into a business and I see that and feel that. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I definitely felt that there. And I mean, look know, how 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 smart is Drew too. I love that too. Talking to a, a guy that successful, who like openly is like, no, I I have no business being the CEO. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, like that's fucking somebody else's job. So like, self aware. Yeah, and, and and you know, like to do that, that's it real takes confidence. a lot of ego too. You know, like, Fuck yeah. like letting go of things like that. Fuck and yeah, understanding your strengths and somebody else that's. You know, within your company that you spot, and you're like, "Wow, no, I know he would do an excellent job," and I'm going to go ahead and step down. Like that takes a lot of balls. That's a leader. Yeah, that's what real leadership is. You know, yeah. fake leadership is the guy that or girl who thinks that they're the best at everything. A true leader is the one that identifies the people on their team who are better than they are at certain things and places them in the right position so that they succeed. And so that the leader succeeds or the company succeeds. These are the these are the attributes about him that I really liked. Mm -hmm. like this I, that's what was drawn to me. Like uh, the woo woo stuff. I don't give a shit about all that stuff that much. You know, let's, <laughs> I, I, think, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just not a fan. I mean, I'm I'm a fan. You, of people. You don't want to start playing that big drum he was talking about. No, yeah, no, no. Mm -hmm. I'm just not. I've just never. Been, but I love. I love. People I can that, see Adam doing that. Though. Yeah. I love people that do. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> that. But it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, to me, sometimes what it, what it does, and it's again like it's um, it reminds me of of a religion. I think there's there's so much positive to say about it, and I think it's important for people to have have it. But I think people uh, are searching, man. Yeah, I know. People are searching. I know. You, you look, when you're when you're a guy like him, think about it this way: <clears throat> thirty seven year old, thirty seven, he's thirty seven year old. He's made a shit ton of money for a long time before Organifi. He was in mortgages. He did uh, what was the other thing he did? did Debt consolidation. Debt consolidation. He made a shit ton of money. Organifi is obviously making a shit ton of money. He's a good-looking guy. He's fit, right? So he's kind of got everything he... Sorry about that, guys. He's got oh, everything he's supposed to have or whatever. Done it. <laughs> when you get everything you think you want and you finally get it and then you realize yeah. that's not what I wanted, where do you go from there? Imagine that. Imagine that for Sucks. a second. Like Everything you fucking work your ass off and you dream of and then you finally get it and you're there and you're like, oh, this is not fulfilling at all mm -hmm. so so i kind of that kind of happened to me really so when i was doing when i was doing the shoe thing like i thought success was um just owning my own time and just having the <laughs> the freedom to do what i wanted when i wanted and long story short i got to that point i wasn't making like crazy money but more money than i had been making and then I just wanted to go to the beach every day. I thought that was like, you know, the, what the entrepreneurs do. Like you get rich and then you just chill at the yeah, beach. Man. And was like, this before? Margaritas. Was this before or when you started growing your hair out? 
This is way before. Oh, so. oh, okay. This is before okay. the luscious locks. Oh, okay. <laughs> luscious <laughs> locks. This is the start. Because I feel like that all goes together. You know, it, does, like, it starts with going to the beach every day, to, and then you, know. you wear the same like, pants. Well, hey, so relaxed. Oh, hey, it just starts growing. You don't waste your time putting <laughs> shoes on anymore. Bro, you know what I'm saying? This yeah, is how this yeah, all starts. Bro, you got you to gotta share about the green juice. Uh, uh, Taylor's been telling me since he's been drinking the green juice, he said his hair is all fucking more shiny oh and all that stuff. How crazy is that? I mean, look at it. So you notice a difference in your hair because you've been taking the green juice. Oh, I love this Absolutely. single cell. So what is it? It wouldn't shine as much as it does. It wouldn't, you know, <laughs> Did like you it think of this? Yeah. Kind of like flares out a little good, bit man. more. Anyway, so, so so what happened? You, you felt the, the need to throw a commercial yeah, in the commercial know, already? Like, in the commercial Jesus, commercial. bro. Oh, yeah. Our salesmen are tripled, oh, dude, for some yeah. shit like yeah. that. So, you got inspired by those numbers. Hey, listen. Like, I'm going to fucking sell, 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 sell. You got, <laughs> you're going to sell. I sell, 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 sell. If we weren't talking about Organifi enough, let me throw another commercial right in the middle of the commercial. <laughs> we just did lines, you know, of Organifi. Inception. Uh, so listen, you went to the beach every day. What the fuck? You weren't happy. Dude, what, nobody can go to the beach with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. On a Tuesday. On a t- dude, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, hey, you want to go to the beach? You want to go to lunch? You want to go hang out? You want to go do something? Nobody. Like, everybody's I like, I got work, work I got man. work, bro. And I'm like, well, this fucking sucks. Yeah. You know, like this is terrible. Yeah. Then you realize it's just like you could go to lunch with guys like me. That's how we met. Well, I know that's what we did do. So, <laughs> Isn't it yeah. funny? That's exactly why. That's exactly why we went to lunch. I'm like <laughs> yeah. this fucking kid's twenty some years old. He's like twenty three years old. I'm like, free time. I'm like, I knew what I did. Like, you know, I was selling drugs at that time. So of course, I, I was. I had to made the freedom so I could do whatever the fuck I want to when I want to. This guy, I'm like, what's he doing? I know he's a good kid. He ain't selling drugs. He's not doing something yeah. like that. No, you just get bored. <laughs> and, then, and then there's no point to it, and it's like whatever. Now, now, what does that feeling feel like? Because I think a lot of people, Empty. yeah. And then you, w- what's worse is you, you thought it was going to be so much better than it actually is or was, oh. and and so you, you know, like you grind, you you work your ass off, you make a lot of sacrifices to kind of get to where you think you you want to be or or what what success is to you, and like I. Put all my eggs in that basket, and it was just—it just was—it was terrible. It was sad. It was yeah. It was the worst part. Did it, you like, feel depressed? Did it make you absolutely. feel absolutely? Really? Yeah. Mm. Really? How long because you had nothing for? to strive for. No, I mean that was at a time like how the the marriage thing was. A, right. Was That's a, right. You were, always forget that. You <laughs> no, I, I did too. And then it's yeah. And like yeah. Oh, you yeah, and I Sal, about dude. That. You guys, so yeah. like so that that happened. The business was doing better than it had ever been doing, and then I'm just like you know I should be happy, but I'm not right. Maybe not for that other part, but mm-hmm. um, so that that's when I was like, oh, well, you gotta. So what what conclusion did you come from? Like come to from that? Did, what, were you think like? Did you reevaluate what it means to you to? I think feel it took it took fulfilled? me. Yeah, I think it took me a, a long time to try to figure out like what my purpose was. Mm. Or what is what, it now? I don't know. I just want to do cool shit with cool people and. You know, I think I think we're doing that. Like last night, I think it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So you like hanging out with us? Yeah, it's cool, cool. I feel exactly. cool now. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's, I feel that's like, like if Taylor the wants to hang out with me. Yeah. Then, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm good. I dude. think he's. I think he's kind of cool. Bump. He's finally rubbing off on you a little bit, huh? You think he's rubbing off on you a little bit? What making me cooler? No, that's impossible. No. I'm I'm, I'm an old dog, dude. Let me put. Let me tell you something right now. And I'm extremely confident with myself. Look at those socks, dude. Look These them. socks? I mean, oh, no, I've been doing that. I've been doing that for a while, bro. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. And that was an accident, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, it worked out in your face. <laughs> hey, look, bro. Every once in a while, every once in a while, a, a broken clock is going to, you know what I mean? Bro- what do they say? A broken clock's right twice a day? Yeah, that was an accident with the sock. But so, so for you, meaning for you, you're just like, I just want to feel fulfilled with what I'm doing. And it's not necessarily the money or the flexibility of my hours. It's just feeling a purpose behind what I'm doing. Yeah, I think I think having an impact matters. Do you do you think you're finding that through Mind Pump right now? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you think there's been Cool, we were going to give you a raise, but we don't need to now. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're feeling so good. Yeah. We'll go ahead and like, take that back. <laughs> looks like he's likes it here. <laughs> we were sweating it there earlier. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you remember I you know, it's been a really fun thing to 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 do this with you and to be honest, I'm trying to think if I've ever done this any other time in my life in business where um, I've allowed someone just to kind of come in and almost create their position or what they're going to do. Mm. You know, like um, I, I, I knew that I was really rolling the dice with even considering that because it's just like that never works out. Right. right? That rarely ever works out. At least I've never seen it really happen, but I really felt confident with um, your understanding of what we were trying to create and build and what your expertise and your talents are. And I really felt like I knew that once you 
felt the brand and really under- mm-hmm. fully understood it. I knew what you got into the lingo and the way you it's know we all interact. It's taken a while though, right? You know, like it, it. You know, I think you said like a year, didn't you? Yeah, yeah you said- I, I've shared that with you more more recently, where it's like I, I finally feel like I'm starting to get a hang of all this stuff and and understand the the tone in in the voice in which the brand speaks and that's really important and then then that kind of then you can kind of build things out from there and and i think we're we're headed in the right direction as far as doing these live events you know i w- i always take pride in doing things that i i think others aren't mm-hmm. and kind of leading the pack and, and trying to set the set the tone and, and set the bar and um i i think we're i think we're on our way so well i think i mean i feel like i'm starting to see that now i knew that we would be doing that i knew that we were already kind of doing that i mean even the just the brand and the message itself is counter you know the culture yeah. i mean that the the culture and fitness is not tell the truth about everything like that it's right. you know take a little bit of science find a way to yeah. either scare people into buying something or you know attach some sort of reoccurring supplement deal on somebody so <laughs> i i really feel like that's been the you know the the message in in our space for a long time. So we've been disrupting that since day one, but I really start. I think it's we're finally starting to make the waves. Yeah, yeah fake. I can see my. I can see our peers, and then I can see the way they're reacting. Dude, it's, it's um, that's that's when you and that that took a long time. You know, I remember it's a telling, massive compliment. It, well, it's it's it is. It's really it's very very cool to see, and it's what we ultimately wanted, right? Yeah, exactly. We want. We just want people to to kind of understand there's a different way to do things. Right. And, and I think that, you know, like, we don't have to be cool all the time and just show the best, you know, we can, we can be real with people and, and humanize this experience and get, you know, get on another level with people. So it's more relatable. I just feel like it hasn't been relatable yeah. for your average person. And for so long, and it's been so frustrating because now you get them, as personal trainers, we get just anybody coming in and it's, it's so fucking intimidating because everybody puts out this superhero shit. I think that's why you guys have been able to build so much trust. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I, you know, it's, it's funny because it's from a business standpoint, you know, what an opportunity to look at an industry and be like, okay, everybody's lying. All I have to do is tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like radical honesty, you know, that's, like, like, like that's so right. radical. That's, that's, that's how about last, how about last night when I said, you know what I'm saying? Cause I knew Uh-oh. that it was so easy, bro. I knew it. Yeah. You know, it's, we it's, all did when you walked in, I was like, Oh wow. Really? Yeah. It's like, so fucking weird. Think about that for weird, a second. Man. How weird is that? That people are like, Thank you so much for not lying. That's a low standard, by the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're not like that's, that's, a, hey, that's, that's the, let's be honest. That's, that's the crazy. truth, right? Of the success is we ain't that good. It's just we're, <laughs> it's like, we're, the, we're, the, we're the tallest midget right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my God. Well, th- you know, think about oh, that, right? Man. Like, you know, people are people are just getting bullshitted left and right, and we we didn't invent anything. You know, we just came in and told the truth. Yeah. And people are getting blown away by the truth. That's weird. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. Well, well fuck, so we, there's so many predators out there. It's the, just, the funny thing is we kind of have to thank the industry for being full right? of shit because it would have said <laughs> if the industry well, was I also, also think that's why we don't hate. That's why we still yeah. I mean, we have friends that that you know, how you, how you make your money and how you do things is up to you. That's your choice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How you I'm not going to judge anybody. That's on them. But no. if you're going to leave it that wide open that all I got to do is come in and tell the truth and it's going to mm. be that fucking mm. easy like shame on you for mm. not seeing it. Not having the balls to do yeah. that because that's the thing that that's what I you have to know that's what <clears throat> kept everybody in the past. I think it's less, I th- I think it's less of a evil thing and more of a, a scared thing. Well, right? yeah, I don't you're think, not going to see return from it yeah, for a long time. There's a lot of risk, and so, that's what we experienced. We uh, did not see like any like major growth financially with that message. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like nobody wasn't the sex. Yeah, the marketing on online <laughs> was right. like Six our message right. is not getting click through. Uh, right, right. You no, know? The, the the in the land of lies, what do they say? In the land of lies, telling the truth is uh, is like rebellion. I think, or you know, it's uh, it, it's radical. It's you're the crazy one because you're telling the truth. And in the in the and and when things go really bad in society or in an industry. They don't start off massively bad. The way they start, the way they start off is with little lies, and those little lies get bigger and bigger. People start to buy in, and so what happens is because here's the deal: 
a, most of the people in the fitness industry that are full of shit, they know they're full of shit. A lot of them, some people think, oh, no, they're ignorant. They believe in what they know. They know they're full of shit. Yeah. In if fact, they if buy, the more successful they are, the more they know. They mo- the more they know. And, <laughs> yeah. and they buy into their own shit because you start to live this lie, live this lie, say more and more lies about food intake, about training, about supplementation, about whatever, about Photoshop this. And here's a yeah, picture of me and my fucking bullshit car that I rented or whatever, you know, every on my Instagram or whatever. And you keep doing that and it just grows and it becomes this monster. And then when you're in the industry, that's just the way it is. Dude. You know what I mean? It's and it's hard to get out of that because you're the fucking weirdo for doing so. Yeah. It reminds me of of Lance Armstrong when they'd ask him about, you know, PEDs and, and everything. And he'd he would just get so overly aggressively defensive about it because he believed he had to like literally believe his own lies <laughs> at that point and yeah. he was like you know he, he, would, he would be litigious about it too if somebody said otherwise it was like that was the level and i feel like that's a lot of the level of that you know the massive money and massive uh companies have been built off of these lies yeah so it's not like this isn't something that that people are really willing to slice right through and, and have something completely counter to that because there's no money in that direction yeah yet. I, I mean I, I know i have a lot of empathy for the, the people i can see how very easily i mean there was many times that like the decisions i, I mean boot camps so is an example of this for me you know i, I knew damn well like no, that was, was a good example this is part of why i I, I stopped doing boot camps was i mean i i'd built up a very successful boot camp business um, but coming from someone who's did a lot of private training before, uh, I realized quickly that I really wasn't helping these people. And mm-hmm. I could, you know, and, and the way I work is that pushed me to be better and to make to it try more, to make it to, yeah, right. yeah. To, try, to try and make it. And I think that I like to think that I did a pretty fucking good job with the the people that I had in the groups that I had. But I really wasn't really helping them long term mm-hmm. at least i didn't feel that way you know so mm-hmm. i that's I, so you have a lot of inner struggle there mm-hmm. but yet i'm i'm rapidly building this business it's growing I, mm-hmm. and i barely even throttling down on it i knew that i, I could put my energy in there mm-hmm. and really crank it and you know something that, that <laughs> you, you learn as you get older hopefully that you learn as you get older and i think we've all learned this lesson is that you know Although lying can get you more immediate gratification, maybe even bring you immediate success, the the reality is that being honest will actually more often than not give you long-term fulfilling success. And when I say success, I don't just mean money. I mean what a, the real true definition of, su- of success is. I mean, like Taylor was saying, you made a bunch of money, you achieved what you thought was success, but were, did you were you successful? No, because there's so many parameters that can define what your success is. And what I think what you have to imagine is that, you know, your life is like a, a it's like a limitless sea of potentials. There's a million different directions you can go. And every decision you make along the way determines where the direction of your arrow goes or where the direction of your life goes. And you have to ask yourself, if I lie a lot or if I tell the truth a lot, or at least I don't lie, what are the odds that the direction I'm going is going to end up in a way that's going to place me in a position where I'm going to feel fulfilled and achieve success? And the odds are, you have to believe that the odds are that if you don't lie and you tell the truth, you're probably, the odds are probably higher that you're going to end up in a better position. So, and that's the, that's the whole, the whole uh, illusion of, you know, of bullshitting. Because there's an illusion out there that if I lie, if I cheat, if I steal, if I Photoshop, if I you know, make all these outlandish claims that I'm going to be more successful, make more money and be happier as a result. And that's an illusion. It's actually not true at all. It's actually the opposite of truth. And so I think if you go down that path and it can be hard because it's tempting and it is very tempting to go well, yeah, in the other direction. You got to think of the other side of the primal side of you that's fighting for survival, right? And trying to live and provide for your family and you know, that's how you, that's the quickest, the easiest way to make money when you're in the fitness space. And it's tough. It's tough to not do that, right? Dude, it requires humility too. Because if you're a fitness expert and somebody <clears throat> asks you a fitness question and you don't know the fucking answer, you know, your, your ego needs to be able to be okay with saying, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And most people don't like to say that, especially when you're being placed in a position mm-hmm. of power or authority. It's like a child asking a parent a question 
and the parent knowing that they don't know the answer and you, did, you what do you tell your kid? They, they're looking up to you, your dad or whatever. Someone asks you a question about fitness and you're a fitness professional, you don't know the answer. Most people make some shit up and that's that's a tough thing. It's, it's a very difficult thing to do to say, I don't know. But the funny thing is there's way more power in it. We've already proven that. Like, you know, being able to, you know, be real, you actually make yourself a little bit more invincible, don't you? I mean, if I make a mistake... You know, if we make a mistake, we've already shown that we can make mistakes and we're human and we're totally more like the average person than not, then you're kind of forgiven. But you paint that illusion of having all the answers and man, when it comes out that you're not perfect, because it will, I think most of the time will come out. Look what happened to Shreds. Remember yeah. what happened with Shreds when the mm-hmm. Photoshopping? I mean, if they if they just didn't do that and if they were just were a little bit more transparent, they wouldn't have been damaged by anything. Yeah, like isn't that. that crazy? That's a good example too of like that's a, a huge thing that happened for them that didn't probably make that much more of a difference by doing that. Sure, it probably sold some more supplements because you could show that it was more extreme results, but by how much? You mm-hmm. know, what percentage more were you were you risking just to make a couple more bucks? You mm-hmm. know. And this is why, I mean, there's, there are some supplement companies that do it right where they don't make those ridiculous claims or whatever. Uh, Mike Matthews' company is a great example. If you watch his commercials on, I, I'll sometimes, he, I, I, he's targeting me for whatever reason. I fall in this category of, <laughs> of his sales. <laughs> okay, he's the master. That, yeah, he's, that fucker has cloned, our, he has cloned our audience. Yeah. And he is nice. It's hilarious. <laughs> and he follows me around everywhere I go. I see fucking Legion everywhere. But you can't hate on the guy. But anyway, you watch his videos. And he'll say things like, look, supplements aren't, gonna, aren't, aren't miracle pills. And what you need to do is eat right and exercise right. But if you do take supplements, here's things. And I like that he's being honest. And it's funny because businesses like his are growing and the other ones are starting to fall. You're starting to see that, that, that trend now start to become more popular. It's kind of cool. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I wonder what the future of this industry is going to be. Well, look you like. know what the big thing is on, in our space, too, with the, uh, is the competitions. Like that's how a lot of these, you know, Instagram fitness models do is they build this huge following up and then they do these eight week challenges Yeah. and everybody puts money in the pot, you mm-hmm. know, and you got, if you got, think about it, you have a hundred thousand followers. Some of these people have a million followers, right? You got a hundred thousand followers. You just need 1% of those people to spend $300 on a chance to win $5,000. It's the lottery. Yeah. They play. They play the lottery game with with people, and it's it's hilarious. Then they all get handed out these cookie cutter diets and programs, and it's follow follow this for eight weeks, and it's totally based off of their aesthetic change. Mm-hmm. And you know, they make a fuck. And you, man, let me tell you something right now. And just so people understand this too, like that, there's a lot of fucking money in that. Oh my god, the, I know people that do it. It's a massive it, hustle, and man. it's a huge, oh, it's a huge because it 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 it, uh, it caters to that false motivation that people get from being in a competition or from signing up for something in 30 days, I'm going to get in a, you know, really fast shape or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it kind of caters that. And I get it. And mm-hmm. I think if you do it right, there may be some, some utility in it. Um, but it's, oh, I've it's, been it's trying to wrap, I've like, been trying to wrap my brain around how to do it the right way. How to yeah, do it the right hundred percent. Right I mean, I'm not stupid. I see that there's a lot of revenue potential there and how could we do this in a way that it would, help and benefit people that also not be missing without making it like by all means necessary right you know like that that tends to be the mentality that goes into these competitions that i have the biggest problem with because who who knows like who knows who's like just starving themselves and like just going through this process just to like get to some kind of an end where mm-hmm. it's like they show you know whatever looks like a, a dramatic transformation for sure that's happening you it's throw, not, it's you not throw healthy... money on you throw money on a challenge and tell people that and one of the options is I can starve my body and not eat. I mean, you see it in competing. They do yeah, that yep. to get up on stage all the time. Dude, I have a buddy that entered into one of those weight loss competitions, and the prize was it was huge. It was like thirty thousand. It was ridiculous, like thirty thousand dollars. Oh wow! And yeah, because he did it with a bunch of like, coworkers, or something. yeah, wealthy friends, and they all put like a thousand dollars or something like that in there. And it was about total weight loss. So who could lose the most weight? So this motherfucker, very smart dude. <laughs> he knew how to game the system. So what do you think he did before it's the like weigh-in? Diuretics. Yeah, gained a bunch before of Before the weigh-in, he tried. Water. He packed on some mass. He ate. He was drinking like like shot glasses of soy sauce to get as much sodium in his body as possible. Eating yeah. hella starches, <laughs> bloating himself up, constipating himself, so that he gained like ten or twelve pounds before you know the day before the weigh-in. Weighs in. Then to the day before the the it's you know intense. the yeah the, the day before the weigh-in <laughs> oh, at the yeah, end. Man. He's in the sauna. He's dropping because you can. If you're a big, do you know, dude, you know that you could drop like 15 pounds in a day. Do you know that this is this is yep. this is and what, he won. This is what happened. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> go. He won the fucking contest. Do you know this is what happened after the first season of Biggest Loser? Mm. 
after the first season of Biggest Loser, from then on out, people game the system. They figured it out the very first season. I actually wow. enjoyed that season because I felt like it was they were testing it. Let's see how this works out. And it went gangbusters. Everybody was watching it like crazy. And so, of course, they bring the second season back. Mm -hmm. And now the second season brought all the smart people mm. that watched it and go like, oh, well. If and you I'm sure the producers, you know, behind the scenes get involved because they know a lot of those tricks. But they're like, well, it's going to make for better TV. Of yeah, course. It's going to be more fuck. dramatic. Exactly. Who gives a shit of, about these people? Of course. Yeah. Of yeah, course. They don't give a shit about no. it. You know, it's it's part of what we're, ex what we're starting to witness in fitness is, I think, part of part of a larger phenomena that's starting to happen. And I think it's fueled, you know, actually I'll say with, with certainty, it's fueled by the ease of access to information. Cause you're seeing, I, I just read an article, article. I shared it with you guys on the in, intellectual dark web. Articleable. So, articleable. <laughs> that's a new one. I did, yeah. Adam taught me that one. Hey. <laughs> I, be, I believe, I believe you are rubbing off. On I, I, right, I'm getting his fucking tummy. I'm getting, I'm getting his tummy. He's getting Adam, Adam. Adam's upstairs, right? Adam just got out of the bathroom, right? He's coming downstairs and he's yeah. looking at me and he goes, yeah. and he, he didn't, he, he wasn't being an asshole or anything. He asked me a question. He goes, Sal, do you think it's, possible really he tried to he, he you know he, he positioned it like a question <laughs> Sal, do you think it's possible it was a when, question when people hang out together that they start to share each other's yeah. microbiome <laughs> like, like we're all in the same we're all in the same period on what you're now. doing is that right? what you're saying? And, and, and i know why he's asking it's because yeah. he's got the shits right now and he thinks it's my fault <laughs> it's your fault he thinks he inherited my it is dude oh, man. i never i had a tough dude i couldn't even have half man. of that i couldn't have i wanted that freaking gelato ca cappuccino drink oh, so yeah. bad yeah, that, that's that Diarrhea. Too, yeah, it's because of my it's my yeah. gut bacteria. Though. Oh, dude, <laughs> no. sounds I couldn't crumbs. even handle half of it, yeah. man. I was in the, up there, yeah. bro. But any, anyway, what yeah. I was gonna say is that so that article on the intellectual dark web talks about these the popularity and the groundswell of support for these controversial uh, truth speaking, and I say truth in quotations because what I mean by that is these are people who are not afraid to talk about the controversy. And to seek out what the objective. Yeah, truth part is. of the group is there's they're on opposing sides, right? Oh yeah, yeah, there's there's people who are on the political right, people on the political left. There's um, people who argue for the existence of God. There's atheists, you know, like Sam Harris is on there. Uh, Jordan Peterson's on there. Ben Shapiro. There's people on the left, it, it, and and it, they're part of this movement. And the funny and the thing in this article was talking about the reason why this movement is growing is because in the past. If you attack these controversial issues and ask questions that were probably unpopular or at least discuss them, that you wouldn't get any airtime on mainstream TV. Like nobody was going to get you if you're if you're if if your opinion wasn't considered popular, but and even if you made a good point or whatever, you weren't going to get on a, a talk show. You just weren't because it wasn't popular. But now you've got you know new media, Joe Rogan, and you know other podcasts and social media. That is reaching way more people, and these people have massive followings. And I think what's happening is you're feeling this. I'm starting to feel this third because I'm on the internet a lot, and I'm on forums a lot, and I've been saying this for a long time now that this truth kind of objective truth movement is starting to grow, and people are starting to question common knowledge. And I think it's it's in in good ways in the sense that there's always art, you know, angry people arguing and yelling or whatever online. Online, but I'm getting more of the like. Let's have an intellectual discussion about abortion. Like that is a very touchy subject, but people are are touching subjects like that, uh, like they were ne never were before. It's funny. The at the event last night, I had people coming up to me asking me. You know, they said to me things like, "There's so much information online, and so much science, and so much, you know, so many so many articles supporting different opinions. Like, how do I know where to find the right information?" And so what I said to them was, I said, "Okay, here's what you do." Find a a good article with uh, maybe some references citing, you know, backing up their argument for a particular controversial topic. Read that article and be open minded. Try to understand the the point of view of the article, and then find an article that is equally as well written with a lot of references that is the opposite, that has the opposite position, and read both of them and be as open minded as you possibly can with both sides. And then see where you are from there. And I think more people are starting to do that. And, and, and you're starting to see now people want more 
realism. It's good because they're going to have to. Yeah. You have to. Exactly. Yeah. It's you just have like to. It's you, called being rational. Well, it's just, it's, yeah. it's just we're moving into this world where we're able to market to people so effectively. Like it was, it's never been like this, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you're mentioning like how, you know, Mike's following you around all over the place. Like you can't get you. I, sometimes I trip out like, like, did I search this or did I just say it out loud? Mm -hmm. And it, and all of a sudden now it's being marketed to me. Mm -hmm. Like I see shit like that. And I'm like, damn dude. Like, so because of that, we're going to be getting a lot of bias information. The mm -hmm. shit that you're always liking, the shit you're yes. always looking at but all the time. The so it's going to be rare. Yep. You get fed something that is the, the counter mm -hmm. to your beliefs. So it's going to become necessary that you seek out opposing views. Well, here's the best part. The best part of it is that marketing, like all industries because of technology, is becoming massively decentralized. And what I mean by that is, of course, there are companies that market that have a lot of power. However, consumers, and I talk about, when I talk about consumers, I don't just mean buying products. I mean consuming every, anything you consume, information, products, opinions, whatever, social media, anything that you consume. Consumers are looking more towards the opinions of average regular people than they are now uh, versus marketers. And what I mean by that is, for example, we'll talk about the supplement industry because that's fitness, right? Ratings and reviews. Ratings and reviews. It, People, it's so powerful. Read, now. An, read an article. How often do you now read yeah. the comments to that article? Every fucking time. Almost every time yeah. you read it. I do. I always read an article and I read the comments. I want to hear what other people have to say about that article. Yeah, you, pick, you pick your movies that way, right? You Isn't that interesting? Now, yeah, you do see like how they used to just sell it with sex or, or somebody that was like smoking hot and then they're holding whatever product it was. And, <laughs> yeah. And now it's like, well, what does the product do? Like, who's used it? Like, what? Like, how, how can I trust this product? And I feel like that's such a great direction that we're going. So, you know, the, that sort of change I'm excited about for yeah. sure. Yeah. So you, what we're seeing now more is is you're, you're starting to like, like let's, again supplements. In the past, it, the way I would recommend supplements to people is they'd say go with a reputable brand. Now, what the fuck does that mean? Oh, brands that have been around a while that uh, seem to be big. Right, that market really well. Yeah, <laughs> right? Terrible advice. Right? You, know what, you know what people do now is they go on Amazon or whatever and they look at the ratings and then they read the reviews and they don't give a fuck what the brand is no. anymore with supplements. That's how I tend to purchase things now. If I want to get a, a fucking new tool, if I want to get something for my car or something for the house, I don't really care about the do brand. You remember how the reviews. Far, do you remember how far back that you can think of an example of that? Like I remember, for example, when uh, like Kia hit the market over here, mm. and I remember thinking, like, what a fucking just ugly ass car, dude. This is <laughs> yeah. like, right? like wannabe Mercedes. Like you just, I just, yeah. I, I laughed at. It. I remember the first year it like hit the market over here, and and I and I remember not being a fan at all. But I also remember, you know, after it had been here for five, ten years and had been around for a while. All of a sudden, and they, all their cars came with a guarantee. To, I believe they were one of the first to do the hundred thousand mile guarantee on their vehicles and their vehicles were super cheap in comparison super to cheap yes super yes. well built yes built well I and know. super cheap and they just outperformed and the next thing you knew that their reviews were smashing all the cars dude and now they're they're, they're top dude right. what do you okay so it's the crazy. number one thing in business forever forever any any business owner will tell you this any marketer will tell you this even if you go back 100 years okay the number one thing is word of mouth always there's nothing more powerful than word of mouth and what technology has done is take word of mouth and put it on fucking super steroids. That's all it's done. Now you have word of mouth, but you have a lot of people that you can hear. These are a huge pool of individuals who are giving things ratings and reviews. And it's creating systems like Uber, Airbnb, and all these other businesses where you don't need any other, you don't need anything else. I don't give a fuck what rating the restaurant. You know, when you go in a restaurant, you see that stupid. This gets an A from the city. Nobody, yeah, do you give a yeah. fuck about that? The Better Business Bureau. Yeah, nobody gives a yeah. shit about that. I'm going to look at Yelp. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to look and see how many people have eaten here. The other part of that is it's also revealing just how bullshit you know, everything was for a long time. Mainstream media is, was so influenced by special interests. I'll tell you, oh, I, went yeah. to, I went to Jordan Peterson's talk the other night. I don't think I've talked about this on the podcast. I went to his talk in San Francisco, and it was a great talk. Um, it, it packed house that was at the Masonic in San Francisco. He basically, go, this is the talk where he goes over each chapter of the book, right? He goes over, he, he actually only went over eight chapters. And you know, Jordan, one thing I like about uh, Jordan Peterson is 
every time he talks, he goes off on different tangents. Mm. So you're not hearing the same stuff. So I hear different stories. And oh, that's cool. He's such an uh, incredible communicator. Um, I'm learning a lot by observing how he talks and mm-hmm. how he communicates things that's influencing me and in the way I, I talk and communicate. But here's something that was fascinating. So I'm, you know, I'm always embroiled in the political spheres and people's opinions and you know, how the mainstream media tries to sway opinion. And I know it's bullshit. I know when I look at Fox News and, C- and MSNBC and they'll cover the same fucking subject completely from two different viewpoints and skew it totally yeah, different. And I know like this one's paid by these people and this one's paid by these people. Like I know all that, right? But sometimes it's really scary when it's right in front of your face. And what the mainstream media has been saying about Jordan Peterson is that he's, you know, alt-right, angry white males, you know, like the like fascism, like completely false um, things that they're saying about. Him. And I know they're completely false because I've listened to so many of his lectures and I read his books. And if he was any of those things, I would hate the guy. And he's not. So I show up and I'm in line and there's a huge crowd of people and I'm looking around and the audience is fully 50% women, if not more, maybe even 60% women. Wow. So that was bullshit. Yeah. I'm looking around and I'm like, okay, I'm looking for, let's pay attention to the, the races of the people. Are we all white? No, it was like probably half or more minorities in the audience than, than white people. It was so opposite of the way that they painted him. And I'm not mm-hmm. doing this to blow smoke up his ass or to say I'm a huge fan or whatever. All, all I'm saying was it was scary. It was scary because all these articles that, are, that have been reading in the mainstream old media were so blatantly false and bullshit that it just goes to show you how the decentralizing of things boy, it's going to start revealing quite a bit. And that's just part of it. You know, it's happening in fitness. It's happening in politics. It's happening in Dude, it every reminds sphere. Me, it reminds me of, of the curtain being open and, you know, the Wizard of Oz. They, they look and it's just this fucking little old guy. <laughs> you know? He projects himself with this big green head. And, you know, I'm, I'm like God to you. You know, and they're like, you're just a little fucking old guy. Yeah. You know? It's crazy. I'm not going to believe this shit anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy and it's scary. It's scary, but uh, it's scary only because it's uh, like when you you know when you have some fears and you're like, oh, this is how it is. But then you actually see it and you're like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't it think really it's, I don't there. think it's that scary because I think we we like, again we always tend to you know flirt with the boundaries and then enough people get burned or doesn't go off doesn't go well and then we come back the other direction and I think the I think the swings over over evolution I think I think or over time I think have been. Uh, less and less, like the, how drastic they are. I, like I think we, as we continue to evolve, we get smarter and smarter. Although we still will push boundaries and we still will get a little crazy, but I don't think it's going to get. I've never had that like chicken little type of mentality mm-hmm. where the sky is falling and like, oh my god, like I'm going to have to go buy property somewhere else and hole right. up and bury my guns and do all these. <laughs> You're not a prepper, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, the, what I'm saying mind like, calendars. Yeah, I just, I kill just us don't all. subscribe to that. I think uh, because we are we. We live now in the society where we're all connected so closely and so easily can communicate. I don't think as a nation we would ever allow that for no, something I'm, to I'm, become like so bad. So I, I'm not I, afraid that something terrible is going to happen. What I, here's what what I mean by scary. I don't mean like I'm scared. I mean scary in the sense that it's 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 crazy how how false things were or are, and it's crazy at how when when things really start to get decentralized. How much that facade's going to fall apart, mm-hmm. and how it's going to be—it's going to be scary in the sense that a lot of people are going to be shocked. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's all going to dissolve. A lot and of people, people are, are people are over it. You know, like it, that. That's why like truth and <laughs> and honesty is is like it's just piercing through all this shit. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. And they can't stop it. Yep, yep. I because just let, everybody everybody can communicate on a level they've never been able to before. That's right. That's right. I, you know, here's the thing. If you have, if people just respect each other in the sense that they respect that each person's an individual and everybody's going to have an opinion and so long as you don't hurt me and steal from me, you can have your opinion and we can talk and discuss these opinions, but I know you're not going to hurt me because we already talked about that and you're not going to steal from me. So although we totally disagree, the common ground that we have is that we understand that we don't hurt anybody and we don't steal from anybody. Boy, that's that's a great that's a great way to have discussions. That's mm-hmm. a great and you can talk about anything. Right. We could talk about the most controversial shit in the world. You could believe in horrible horrible shit, but so long as I know you're not trying to hurt anybody or steal from anybody, like it's all good. And mm-hmm. it's exciting. Yeah. Real good stuff. We have when when is uh when's the mirror event, Taylor? Next Friday the 18th. So that's Where's right. that? Seattle. 
See, that's a isn't that your hometown? That's a Doug's yeah, hometown. Now you you said Seattle this girl. This event has. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, can you say it like that, Taylor? I no, hate, I hate you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> say it like that. Sorry. Just, hey, come to Seattle. You're so smooth. <laughs> You're so suave. I can't. I, I'm sorry. I, can't I get, I get sucked it. in. You know. I feel like if like I'm close to you and you're talking, like. <laughs> Chills, you know what I mean? My hair like, will stand ooh, up. Like have you, have you been now, Taylor? When you were up up in Seattle, did you actually go to the mirror? Look yeah. At, oh, so you've been I in the, the flagship. So yeah. you've been in the location. It's really cool. Is it? Yeah. Now they is have, it is it bigger bar. than the the event we did tonight? Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. So that's it's an even bigger space. That's gonna ooh, be cool. I can't wait, man. I know that last one was fun. This is gonna now be you more. described it like it's it's sounding like when you told me it's almost like this bar coffee shop type of look lounge where they serve coffee beer kombucha yeah so i think during the day it's it's part like cafe community space it's also a retail space and then they they do community events out of it too so what we're gonna do we're gonna do what's different about this event than the one we did yesterday um is we're gonna do an actual podcast interview okay so oh that's story right interview which is a little different, and then and then we'll transition to the the live qua, which oh, is gonna be really fun. Oh yeah! That oh, are, that's gonna be. Is it is wow. it filled? Is it filled up yet? Or are people able to still sign up for I think, it? I think we should pack this one out. I think so. Keep going. keep going. Let's yeah. let's break the fire. Where do people huh? go, Doug? I keep, I keep forgetting. Where do people go to get, get signed yeah, up on this one? Go to mindpumpmedia.com forward slash tour but make sure you put www at the beginning <laughs> because w- that w- link will not take you there if you don't do that so www.mindpumpmedia forward slash tour mindpumpmedia.com dot com yeah forward slash tour exactly. it's also in the show notes too so we okay. yeah yeah definitely check that out probably the easiest way for yeah. people what do you say we answer some questions yeah we could do that oh yeah mm. I forgot we were doing that yeah yeah seeing that this show's already late <laughs> all right so we have actually what do you uh, mean this show's supposed to air tonight yeah I still, oh, I still, shit. I still got to edit this thing. We kept, <laughs> we kept you guys waiting. Yeah. It's going to be so I'm worth edit, it. Edge of your seat. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Rebecca.UBS. If you want to compete in both bodybuilding and powerlifting, does it matter what you do first? Ooh, that's you a, should ask Ben Pollock about that's this. That's a huh? really you, it, I, did you pick that? You picked of that. Of course. One? You yeah. know you know why I picked this question? I know why you did, because yeah. we were just looking at Ben Pollock's picture and we were discussing he how impressive how unique his physique looks for somebody who's never competed for bodybuilding before and how impressive he is. There is this strange, there's no science we've, to support we've this. Ta- I know we've talked about this on the show. This is pure speculation. And I a hundred percent agree with you. Right? I have nothing to back it up. Yeah, there's no <laughs> science. <laughs> I have nothing pure but my own experience and what i've seen information. what i've seen in clients that i've trained what i've seen in my own body but i, I can't put words to it because it doesn't mm-hmm. fully make sense to me yeah when you when you train with really heavy fucking weight when you train for maximal strength it's a different look for years okay you do it for years and then you get shredded you get this hard grainy. granite grainy yeah look to your body it's this very hard grainy <laughs> Great input. Great input. Thanks, 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 he just man. salved you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just sports. He just sports statted you right there, dude. You cherry picked no, a did. couple turns. No, you <laughs> just, like, how many more? You, you just face? cherry picked. You yeah. just cherry picked. That was so good. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. Were, were you gonna go? Were you gonna go with like dried? Hey, dude. Look? He, no, you should see he's kind of good at this. See him in a couple weeks. You know, uh, just yeah. wait for him to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it's true, dude. Look, in bodybuilding, sharpening up in bodybuilding. Building, you had guys like like Dorian Yates who trained insanely heavy for a long time. You had people like Ronnie Coleman. Um, back in the day, people like uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Franco Colombo talked about the importance of heavy, heavy strength training to give you that granite kind of hard look. I Look, I train, I always veer more towards, and sometimes to my detriment, towards uh, heavy training. I enjoy really, really heavy uh, maximal strength type training. And when I got myself shredded for Maps Anabolic, uh, because you know before we, before Doug and I put Max, Maps Anabolic out, we wanted to 
get some, take some pictures of me that would be kind of marketable. And I'm not a very big guy. So I said, okay, you know, one of the best, one of the things I can do to kind of set myself apart is just get shredded. And so that's what I did. And I was, it was kind of cool to see my body shredded because I have, I got this really hard grainy look to my physique. And I think it's because I always trained really, really heavy and it gives that kind of look. And again, there's no science to support this, but I've seen this in people. I, even, I, I, like I, that. I even hate using the word grainy because I feel it, it's, 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 There's just not a lot of adjectives to pull from, though. It, you know, to, it, to describe well, exactly look, what that looks like. What does it yeah. look like? You got, it's harder edges, yeah. right? It's harder edges to muscle. The skin almost looks. It looks thin. It looks. Um, the muscles just look very. It just looks like you can move shit. You know, like you can do work. <laughs> like you move shit. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's, that's way that's more science. objective. Justin. Listen, <laughs> the other ones look like a bunch of fucking balloons, and they're all like filled with oil and shit. You know, well like, the 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 point, uh, you know, circling back to the actual question, like which one do we, <laughs> which one do we think is is more important? Real technical. Here, I, I this is what I think. I think that uh, most bodybuilders do not do enough strength training. Yep. Like and maximal strength. Yeah, yes. And I think that they would greatly benefit through uh, running more of it in the routine. I don't think it matters so much. Uh, I, or at least I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference to strength train or power lift first and then get into bodybuilding or vice versa. I just think. Well, which different. one do you think? Let's say you're equally. This is a good question now. If Let's say you're equally interested in both. Well, power and, lifting and. and yeah, and, like like I really want to do well in both of them. So I'm going to compete in both of them or, uh, you know, I'm going to. Uh, it's going to. Well, I'm gonna build, well don't you think that. Building the strength is going to have yeah, way more carryover, right? That's what like doing that first is your foundation. Yeah. I mean, it, Arnold did that, right? He was a power lifter or, or Olympic lifter going yep. into bodybuilding later on, but he just had that base of strength yeah and then just kind of built in, in isolated areas of yeah body. no it's almost a, actually it's not even close that's not even close to baby because you're going to get the just the cns training you're going to get from strength mm -hmm. training and lifting power lifting like that compared to hypertrophy training and you, you have to learn function like mobility of more when you train power lifting than you do with bodybuilding yes you almost have yeah. to break bad habits if you start with bodybuilding and then go to, to power lifting. right whereas if you will go from power lifting to bodybuilding there's no real bad habits to break i mean you have to kind of start to learn to feel muscles more right. than the than just doing movements, so that, that's a bit of a learning curve. For well, yeah, no, that hap that happened to me. Yeah. I mean, when I told I was competing, yeah, talk about the change in your physique because you were competing bodybuilding style for for years and years and years and achieved success doing so. You looked phenomenal, but then we all started mind pump, and then you got on this kick of just getting strong, and your body changed. I saw it. There was. There's a picture you posted Your of before back and after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was no, a big difference. That well, that was the big game changer was my back. And that was the one that fucking blew me away where I was like, holy shit. And I've shared stories on the podcast before the how the strength change the change in strength I saw big time. Like the seated row that I've been doing for ten years of my life consistently in my routine that I maybe pull 180 pounds or so. All of a sudden, I'm ripping 300 like it's light. Like that was like holy shit. Like mm -hmm. to feel myself jump. I mean, to feel yourself jump like that over a in a year's time. When for 10 years of of training, I didn't. I or incrementally went up for years and years. So, yeah, I, I saw the for sure strength. And then when I saw when you peeled down, yeah, finally. When, yeah, when I leaned all the way out, I saw how thick my back had gotten. My back had gotten it. And, and again, here's another here's a bro term for you. It get the it got that 3D look, mm -hmm. and in yeah, because you were wide, you were already wide. Yeah, I'm a tall guy, and I have broad shoulders, and I have a very narrow waist, so I already have the natural V taper look. And a lot of guys will, if they do a lot of lat pull downs and they do seated row all day long, they tend to develop this nice wings, and mm -hmm. they but they look kind of like a pancake, and they look flat. And somebody who deadlifts. I, I can always tell somebody who deadlifts 400 pounds plus. You could mm -hmm. just, if you're pulling 400 plus pounds off the ground, like you just, you got to have a thick back. You've got those columns. Yeah, you've got these, those center columns and you have a thickness to your back, which gives the quote unquote mm -hmm. 3D look that mm -hmm. people talk about. But that, to me, that's the definition of that. That makes the most sense to me when someone, when you hear that bro word of, oh yeah, his back looks 3D, you know, like, okay, you know, well, the, what does that mean? <laughs> and, and the funny thing too is as being in, in, in fitness as long as we have, I can tell, even if they look similar, even if the people look similar in terms of body fat percentage, you know, both lean, both maybe aesthetic, I can almost tell when I look at people like, oh, that guy's, that guy, like, he trains a lot for strength and performance, and that guy over there kind of just trains for aesthetic. You can almost tell in their in their physiques. 
Well, and especially in the, I well, mean, the movement can, patterns. Well, you yeah. can really tell in the extreme versions of both categories. I mean, yeah. look yeah. at your your top level men's physique guy, and look at your top level power lifter guy, and it's like they are very, oh, yeah. very different yeah. looking. No, I'm talking about even when they're both lean. You can almost tell. In, no, I'm. It's, yeah. ben, I mean, look at Ben Pollock. Yeah, that's true. Look at Ben Pollock. Like he looks it, strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's a because he's not. That's he. That picture. I don't know if you read the caption. He's not getting ready for. A, 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 he's getting ready to power lift. Yeah, he's wow. still competing in powerlifting. <laughs> yes, bro. He's peeling down. It's yes, crazy. that's what's crazy. Yeah. Wow. he's not even uh, trying to get on stage uh, right now. That's what he looks so like. So I'm going to speculate a little bit on why this may be happening. Again, there's no scientific, there's no science to support this. This is pure speculation. But and it's, I'm, I'm not the only one speculating this. This has been speculated for decades by bodybuilders and strength uh, athletes for a long time. Here's what I think that's happening. I think the nature of bodybuilding encourages more of that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, more of that fluid within muscle, which gives the muscle a different look than strength training, which may not increase increase the sarcoplasm as much, but increases muscle fiber thickness more. And I don't know how you would prove this. Uh, I, I don't know if you'd have to biopsy muscles or whatever to figure this out, but mm. it almost seems like it looks that way, right? Like, like someone who lifts heavy for a long period of time for for years or decades and then they get shredded. It's almost like they have more muscle fiber, less fluid. And then the guys that do the bodybuilder type routines for long periods of time and you know focus on getting the pump. When he to explains fluid, that to you, does that make fiber. any sense to you at all? Mm, Being honest? Maybe. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I just want I'm following. Okay. I like just, one yeah. may look more like a balloon that's bubbly and shapely and the other one may look more like a piece of concrete that was mm-hmm. carved in, in that particular shape. Does that kind of make sense? I bet if I saw pictures, maybe that would help. Well, well yeah, I mean, if you just take it down to like something that has a little bit of fluid versus something that's pretty much just like Solid. muscle and well, skin. To that point, something that I... That's my speculation. No, yeah. to that point, something that I noticed big time in my physique after I got into strength training um, after the competing thing was when I would compete, um, and I see this a lot when, in, in my peers, is you look super impressive when you're pumped up. Oh yeah. I, Good point. I I would get I would get aired up and I would and I I did actually did not post pictures of myself aired up because I was like if someone sees me in real life they're going to be like what happened to you? <laughs> Cuz I look like I put 30 pounds on. I drink a gallon of water. Just I mean like so think that. Of, yeah. I got a gallon of water. I got 3 400 grams of carbs inside of me. I'm fucking pumping the blood in there high reps like crazy yeah. and all of I mean I look I literally and I'm already a 6 foot 3 230 pound guy like I look 260 all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I would, but then I also would shrink all the way back down. When you, when the pump would go yeah, away. Yeah, when the pump would go away, I would deflate all the way down. And I would, I mean, and in my head, I would always be like, man, I'd, I'd want more of that look. I feel like I don't look anywhere near what I look like all pumped up. Well, when I started strength training way more, what I noticed was I didn't get that crazy same massive pump as I did before, but I walked around buffer looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it lasted longer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't need to be inflated to still look like mm-hmm. I, I, I trained and I lifted. Like mm-hmm. I, I relied. I feel a lot on the pump to give me the look that I wanted all the time mm-hmm. by always chasing the pump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think a lot of the guys that and girls that stay in the 10 to 15 to 20 rep range and the super setting and the low rest periods all Mm -hmm. the time. And they're constantly chasing that hypertrophy Mm. to that feeling of pumping up the muscles and they're not heavy strength training one to two reps. And you You think that's why they, they really do detour from strength training sometimes. Cause it's like they, they don't get the same kind of feel. Of course. I don't like this. That's what, that's what, that's what would change. That's what changed me for many years. So I would, it's not like I, I talk about on the show how I never train like below six reps and I never did, but every once in a while I would creep down to like five or six reps but even then, like I remember, like never staying there very long because of that exact reason. Yeah, because the, the pump, pump, the pumps were terrible. Yeah, I was never as when I hit 15, 10, 15 reps, super setting some of that. Oh, I felt amazing, and it fed that part of me that I was like, oh, I feel good. But it was yeah. artificially, it was artificially yep. blood yep. and fluid pumped in there. Right. I wasn't really getting more muscular. Yep, yep, yep. You you hardly ever get a pump with when with when you do proper. You know, heavy weight. Hell of men's physique guys are stuck in this. I'm calling all you fools out that don't know this. Like, the, <laughs> yeah. here's some. I'm serious. Yeah. Like, you're gonna do a workout. So many of these dudes that, and I would see them show after show. That's why they all look. Oh, so many of them look the same. Okay, and, and after every show. And because, what's funny? What body part 
what one body part wins competitions, physique and bodybuilding? You're back. back. Yeah. You're back. Mm-hmm. What's the one body part you pretty much can't fully fucking develop unless you train for strength? You're back. Yeah. It's very difficult to do so. And that's what that's the big difference is that in that body part. There's other body parts too that you can tell when somebody strength trains versus when someone, you know, well, someone like doesn't. The core. Yeah, core, like a thick core, hands, oh, yeah. forearms, neck sometimes. Just like a brick. Yeah, I yeah. can always tell when I see a buff dude with a thick neck, I can tell like, okay, oh, yeah. th- they don't just lift weights in the gym. They do some other shit too, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know? But but the, but true, it's the back. Like, it's hard to develop a really impressive, like, like competition winning back without doing heavy fucking shit. Yeah, well, you know, there there's a uh, caveat to that too, is that this, you know, when you train low repetitions, that also, I think there's more reward, but there's also more risk. risk. Oh, hell yeah. So that was another thing that I noticed. I started chasing the, once I saw the benefits my body was getting from the low reps. Uh, I caught up in it. Oh, yeah. I was like, man, I, I, I all of a sudden started training this one to three rep range because of the gains were coming on. And for a guy who's been lifting for 15 years yep. to see gains kind of coming on like that, I was like, whoa. Like, I want to keep doing this. And of course, I kept doing it. And then now all of a sudden I get all these nagging pains. Oh, now my joints start hurting. And now I have these, I'm just, my back is hella tight I'm, and my hips are tight. And I start to feel that because I'm not, then I'm not doing the things to balance myself out and counter all that, mm-hmm. that heavy lifting that I'm doing. So, you know, you got to, that's, and that is the importance of why all the programs are phased the way they are is they're, and then they, we tell people on the show and on our forum all the time to have, flexibility you know maybe you stretch a phase out for four weeks or whatever or maybe you cut a phase short two weeks and you're on to the next that's that, that's fine and to each their own but oh, no body build, bodybuilding style workouts definitely uh definitely are more conducive to longevity than heavy fucking strength based workouts i mean it's true like yes. constantly pushing yourself for one to three reps Boy, you have to have perfect uh, taxing, perfect mobility, and perfect movement. Yes, to to be able to do that for a long time. Y- yes, otherwise you're gonna hurt yourself. Yes, you'll hurt yourself. And that's why too, I think that I think if you, st- I think we all agree, right? Strength training would be the by far more beneficial to start with, to start with and, and then go into bodybuilding. Next question is from John Alva Seven for online training coaching. What are your thoughts about high ticket coaching? Do you feel it's better route for us trainers wanting to go into the online world? Or is low ticket better, focusing on volume to help more people? I would never think that low ticket is a, is a good idea, especially something that requires your time. If it's your time by you doing that, I, it's, and it's always a value and price thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if if you're, you're having a hard time charging people X amount of dollars, then your service isn't valued at that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a volume thing too. You know, like it's two business models, right? It's the low volume, high price model versus the high volume, low price model. Now, well, one of here's and here's the trade off. The trade off is this: typically, what do you get? What do you get from a low volume, high price model? You know, you don't even you're you're not even really in the fitness industry except for our podcast, right, Taylor? This is true for all businesses. What do you typically get when people pay a lot of money but there's less volume? better quality, mm. right? Much better quality, better service. Now, the opposite, the, 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 but the trade-off is you need, you don't get a lot. You can't have tons of customers. Right. You just can't do that. So you can go the low, the low cost, high volume route, but understand that you're going to be sacrificing quality. I don't care how good your fucking systems are. It's just the, the quality will have to decrease a little bit. I think bit. you're also dealing with a certain type of customer at mm-hmm. that price point. That's true too. That's right? a great point. You want you want to. And what kind of customers do you want to attract? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't. Last thing you want. I remember that being a trainer and working my way up from being somebody who was, you know, charging fifty dollars an hour all the way up to where we were charging one hundred and fifty dollars an hour, mm-hmm. and each incremental step along the way. Mm-hmm. And as my rate would increase, I realized I started to attract the better client and the better customer mm-hmm. because they valued my time that way. It's like. I, I realized really, and now it's like if I was, you know, obviously I don't train anymore, but if I'm talking to a client about my, it's a very easy conversation. Like I value my time mm-hmm. and I know that I provide that much value for your life. So it's not even like a, a thing to be debating. And mm-hmm. you also got to think the scalability of what some of these online coaches are doing. I, I see it a lot. Like <clears throat> the model is right now to go low 
and have high volume. Yeah. And just because you can reach so many people on on social media Mm -hmm. and you're going to, I mean, it's impossible to give a great, you know, one-on-one type of service to somebody for super cheap. It just, it's not scalable. Or with tons and tons of volume. Yeah. It's just not, I mean, if you're going to go that route, if you want to go the high volume route, then figure out how to design really nice, you know, well-programmed programs and workouts like we do and design them in a way that's going to hit most people or be effective for most people and then do it that way. But to, to try to offer coaching that's high volume, mm-hmm. it takes away from the coaching aspect. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah I, I'm always a quality guy. And that that's what led me into the direction of like charging premiums, you know, and like, what does that look like? What kind of value can I add to, you know, like make it match what I'm asking from my client. And like, I'm, I, that was like my entire business model. And I, and I honestly, if I was to go back, I would do it all over again because there's, it's such a differentiating approach than everybody else is always like trying for the price war or trying to be, um, you know, cheap and, and get things to, you know, the masses, but you're just going to attract a lot of people that aren't really serious about it. And, you know, they're just going to kind of slough it off because it doesn't hold the value, um, you know, of something that actually you're asking them to really be committed in Mm -hmm. a sense by, by paying that kind of a money. And so, um, yeah, you, you can get to a point too where you really, you really just kind of construct what that perfect client looks like for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they, and then you can you can draw you literally draw that up to the to the very details of what you want them to look like, and it it literally like you you get better at marketing to that person, and then it becomes a reality. Yeah, I mean, and just and if you're gonna go the low the the low cost high volume route coaching, just be honest with people and tell them, hey, I have a lot of clients. I have this many people I work with. This is what I provide. And it's not like the, not like I'm coaching you one-on-one and just be honest. And I'm sure people will see value in it. You know, I I remember when the, the chiropractor industry started doing this, you know, there was a second there where this, there became this like method of applying chiropractic care where, and there was a term for it. I don't remember what it was where a chiropractor would have whack them and crack them. five beds, five beds in a room. Do you guys remember this? Did you go? You went crack to chiropractors whack. a lot, right? Bro, no, they, remember s- that they schedule by the 50, every fifteen minutes. Remember yeah. that there was like all of a sudden it made a switch where you would go to a chiropractor before you and it was like, like stem machine mm-hmm. massage, and then they just go. Yeah, yeah, it was one. On, it used to be one on one. You go in an office or whatever, and then all of a sudden you go in and there's like seven beds and there's other people laying down next to you, and you'd go from one to the next to the next. To the next, time. okay. Hold this stretch for the next five minutes. I'll be right back. And he goes the next time. And I don't remember what the there was. A, was there a name for this method or Doug? I don't know. I think there's a number of different modalities practicing chiropractic, but some of them are very speed oriented. Yes, and uh, others are spend a lot more time with people. And they would spend. They would sell it. They would actually do courses and teach chiropractors how to do this in order to to turn their businesses into profitable ones. Mm-hmm. And so you know, it's that's always kind of the trade off and. I don't know, maybe because we're purists in fitness, and it's like if you're going to coach people, like coach them. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's the guilt. Maybe. That's, <laughs> maybe, a, good, that's a good point. You know, maybe maybe for so many years. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a good point. You know, we probably chased the dollar ourselves, and for so many years, we we were probably giving awful advice, even if we didn't know better or not. But that's enough to make me feel guilty and feel like. Do you think that there was a, a level of? willful ignorance for a short period of time before sure. you sw- turn the corner yeah. sure absolutely like yeah. he said with the group training i experienced the same thing i just knew that when i was group training i wasn't being myself to the level of like i know i'm helping this person like i was just trying to make it like i'm not hurting anybody here you know <laughs> <laughs> like that was my goal you know like everybody's doing a million things in different directions and um you know, you just try and staff it accordingly, but Dude, it's did, just not, it's, it's just not as effective as it could be. Did I ever tell you? So I, the, little, so my entire fitness career, I either trained clients or managed trainers or gyms. Right. And then I had my wellness studio where I, where I had clients and my, the longest stint I had with group training was probably, I think it was maybe a grand total of three months. So I, I, I did a circuit training class. Where people could show up and they'd pay a much lower rate, you know, for coaching because there's ten people in a class, and I'd set up a circuit for them and they'd go from you know exercise to exercise and and that was it. And I only did three months because I fucking hated it. I couldn't stand it. It was hard for me to 
It was hard for me to continue doing it knowing that it was bullshit and people are just going to sweat and they're not going to progress. It was a very difficult thing for me. And when I don't when I don't like something, it's hard for me to fake it. And so I wasn't good at it. And so it wasn't very popular. So I had to shut it down. But there was one moment. My God, this is so funny. Probably the third class. One of the exercises that I had was you have this medicine ball, the bouncy ones, the ones that you can bounce on the floor and they'll, they'll, they'll go up real high. And the exercise was... I bounced the medicine ball and your job was to chase it and catch it before it landed. Okay. So this was the exercise. It was like a sprint. So this lady who was probably 45. Oh my God. Uh, who, you know, she worked out. So she looked fit, but she never ran. This is going to be all bad. She never ran. <laughs> Nobody ever. Who the fuck runs nowadays? Anyway, no. You know what I mean? Like you don't run unless you're being chased by something. So for class starts, I bounced the medicine ball. She goes to take off and she fucking trips and i saw my i saw like liability waivers like i saw everything like like what did she sign <laughs> yeah dude she started going forward and i don't know i think it was an act of god or something no. she caught herself with her foot and then kept running but i just saw teeth like flying everywhere oh, i wow. envisioned the whole thing it scared the oh, fuck out of me I'm i like, saw somebody I need to running stop this bullshit. A, yeah running a boot camp adjacent to like when i was training somebody at this gym they're doing it outside and um i just saw this guy doing just basic speed ladder drill stuff, right? But he was unmanaged, and he caught his foot on the back of his other foot, like the back of his ankle, and literally just fell right on his face and gets up, and he's just, <laughs> no, no. two teeth gone, blood all over oh his face. Oh, my God, he lost his teeth. Two teeth. Ladder drill? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. and just, <laughs> And I, and I was like, oh my God, it's a lot of blood. You know? <laughs> just call, get on call 911. And like, he's just sitting down, like trying not to like, oh my God, I do, I do, I do want to say though, if I were to do like a boot camp or do something like this, if I, if I'm in, okay, if I'm in Jonathan's position, I know Jonathan, right? Too. I actually would run these boot camp type classes or I would structure them, uh, you know, as far as business model wise, like the boot camps, but it would the class that I would teach would be like a mix of FRC and Eldoa. Hmm. And this is what I do right now on Saturdays for the the couples that I've had in my life as clients of mine for 10, 15 years. And, you know, when I've no longer had time to train them or do we've maintained relationships and Saturday mornings when I'm in town, a lot of times we're traveling, so I don't get to do this. But Saturday mornings, I, I get up and I and I teach this class, and it's free. I don't charge them for any of this. My way of kind of giving back, probably again the guilt thing, and uh, <laughs> and so paying our penance, right? Yeah. No, I do. I feel I feel I owe it to some people, and and I feel like I'm actually really impacting their lives. And I remember, so this is what's kind of neat about this group of people that I have is they were part of my boot camps way back when when I was fucking battle roping them and running through ladders and running, you know, <laughs> fucking stairs and all that shit, right? And I remember that um, I remember thinking like, man, the, most of them, there's not any, I don't think one of them is younger than 50. So these are like 50 to mm. 65 plus uh, year olds and a lot of couples. And, you know, I remember like all of them, you know, like looking at all their posture, their mechanics. And I knew it was terrible. And I'm going like, Jesus, like all what, you know what they really need to be doing is just like corrective stretching all yeah, day long. Right. The whole and time. It, it wasn't until we started to really dive into FRC and Aldo and those type of things that I really start to implement that. And, you know, now I could see that because you yeah. have them hold a position. Yeah. I and teach, you just go from station to station. Yeah, that's yeah. all we do. I, yeah, I, I teach a one hour class and it's a, that's it's a mix smart. of, it's a mm -hmm. mix of animal flow, Eldoa and FRC all built into one. And I do it with them. I take them through it. And I part of it is selfish too. So it's a way for me to get back. And it's also, um, it gets me up on a Saturday when I would probably sleep. To do sleep all in. this mobility yes, stuff. Yes, to yeah. do all this mobility stuff. So I'm sure there's a little bit of selfish uh, fulfillment <laughs> there too. Hmm. Uh, and so I get an opportunity. How to can I motivate myself to do mobility? Work? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so, a group. But if I was Jonathan, I would uh, I would in, for sure invest in uh, FRC. I would invest in Eldoa. I think they're I think they're ahead of the curve with. Uh, and I think agreed. Um, I think where we're going in this uh, I generation and with the phones and the laptops and stuff like that, this this type of stuff is going to be extremely important mm -hmm. to teach people. So I would start to be a, way ahead of people and start creating these classes that uh, that you teach this in. And I think that would provide incredible value. Mm -hmm. I think you could feel good about putting people in a class setting in it and not feeling like you're just 
taking their money to make them sweat and lose five pounds mm. then gain five pounds to lose five pounds. And then I would take the coaching concept um, that you're doing, you're doing virtually. I would start low, just like I did. I started at uh, what low I thought was $200 uh, a client a month for coaching. Um, and with that, they got to talk to me daily um, and they got diet and they got feedback from me. And each time I added a new client, I added value to what I was doing. And I would learn off of what I did the previous month. Like what did that client feel like they received from me? How could I have made this better? And then also more efficient because I am scaling a business. And every time I added a client, I upped my price by $25. And I kept doing that until I got up to $500. And then by that time, mind bump was off and running and I never had to do it again. But if I were to be, if I was in your shoes, knowing where, where you're at in your life right now, um, that would be my advice on handle the online coaching and how I would scale the pricing. Um, and I would create more value and try and spend less time and or less or have less people and more value for them. And then teach classes to where you could have 10, 15, 20 people in there mm -hmm. that you charge a monthly fee to, to be able to do classes like that. Next question is from Joe Pushner. Do you all feel the victim mentality is on the rise in society. Oh, God. If so, how do we effectively begin to deal with it in ourselves and others? The victim mentality is mm. for mm. sure on the rise. For sure it's on the rise. Is it or are we more aware of it now? Oh, no. I think it's, I think it's more on the rise. And here's why I think it's more on the rise. Because life is a lot fucking easier. I think life is easier. Kids are born with more uh, opportunities uh. and things and stuff and... They don't have to work as hard for things. We have and to actually create challenging scenarios. Yeah, and a lot so of when, times. and so when they don't get what yeah, they enter want, enter the rise of Spartan. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep, like yep. we're where things are so easy in our in our yeah. society and life now. We have invented a race <laughs> that fucking yeah. punishes you <laughs> yeah. for fucking two oh, hours. You haven't been dirty your whole life. Here right. You go. Right. And not only that, but we're going to charge you. Well, yeah. To yeah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to make a fuck ton of money <laughs> off of that. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Right. But, uh, fucking brilliant. Well, it really is. I mean, that's why I love Joe so much. Like Joe a fucking gangster for seeing that how early he saw it and then sticking through it dumping millions of dollars into it when he wasn't making money yeah. and continuing to push through to see that vision and let me tell you he's fucking on a ride now oh yeah and he's gonna be on a ride for it's a while perfect timing it's, uh, you know, for something like that it's, it's it's so needed i mean people just i mean they're seeking for the irony is though how many people actually know why it's so fulfilling for them they don't they, they just they don't they're they just don't. drawn to it they're drawn to it naturally because we need it because i know i have a lot of friends that have done it and love it and talk all great about it but if yeah. you ask them like why oh it's just cool it challenges oh, yeah. you it's you know what i'm saying that they, yeah. and they talk like that but they, they're not really connecting why that why that is for them a lot of people don't dive deep enough into that they just they're drawn to it it fulfills something it feeds something that's an inner desire that we all need and want mm -hmm. and then they so they do it but meanwhile it's like that should give you a sign. Uh, well, look, it's it's so pervasive and insidious to and easy. It's so easy to blame all your failures on things that you can't control because you can't control them. So it's not your fault. You know what I'm saying? Like the reason why I didn't get that job or I'm not successful, the reason why I didn't do so well is because I don't know, my gender, my race, I grew up poor, I was born in difficult situations or whatever. All things that you have no control over because it re removes responsibility from you. Now, here's what happens when you take when you when you remove responsibility from you when you eliminate that from your from your from the way you think about things. You also disempower yourself. Mm -hmm. When everything is a result of things you can't control, then that means you control nothing. That means you have no power. It's, it's there's nothing I can do about anything that happens to me in my life because. You know, I'm either I'm not privileged, I'm not the right gender, I'm I grew up poor, I didn't have the same opportunities, I'm dyslexic, I'm an amputee, I'm paralyzed, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And they're all they can things pose challenge. Here's the thing, here's what I love. And we'll, we'll I'm gonna go controversial now. We'll talk about privilege for a second. I love that term when people throw that around. Boy, do I fucking hate that term. And it's not because, you know, you know, because it's white or black or whatever. Not not because of that. Here's why I hate it. I hate the term privilege because it assumes you know somebody. It assumes you know somebody and right. all of the factors that make up that individual. Right. If I were to sit here and make a list of all the possible challenges that someone could have in their life, everything from 
you know, their life, their parents, their mentality, their genetics, the school they went to, the people they met, Circle the of fucking friends, like everything. I mean, I could literally make an infinite list of possible challenges. If you know what I, well, it's I always, an infinite fucking list, and you can't possibly quantify, and each one of and every single thing on that infinite list, there's an infinite scale of how challenging someone can sit, can consider it to be. Mm-hmm. I may consider my you know dyslexia, for example. Imagine if I'm dyslexic. I may consider that as an incredibly difficult challenge, a horrible stumbling block, and something that just preventing me from whatever. Or I may think of my dyslexia as an afterthought. Like, oh yeah, I'm dyslexic, no big deal. Like there's also that too. There's this infinite range of how you can consider all these infinite things that could be possible challenges. You can't possibly know everything about someone to call them fucking privileged and to say that they're lucky and you're not. And yeah, you can go and you can say they may be lucky in this particular parameter compared to me on this specific parameter. You may be able to do that, but good fucking luck. And it's also disempowering as shit to look at somebody and be like, Oh well, the reason why they're successful. Have you ever asked they're somebody, way better than I am? Have way you ever more. asked somebody like, "What is if someone says like, oh, that's white privilege'? Like, what does white privilege mean to you? Have you ever? Yeah. Asked, what do they say to you if you? You know, when they use that term, and by the way, that was a term created by the by politicians to separate us, one hundred percent. And that's what they do very fucking well. Uh, what does white privilege mean? Well, it means that if you look at statistics, you can say white people generally less likely to be incarcerated, generally tend to have more money generally are more likely to have two parents in the house. Generally, we can say this, that, and the other. But on an individual basis, it means jack fucking shit. Right. It means nothing. It really does. Because what, regardless of what your race is, all of those things can be true or false. And so it's silly to say that. It's also, dude, here's the other side of this. It's fucking terrible to say that because let's say I'm a, let's say I'm a black kid growing up in America today and I keep hearing the term white privilege. Well, what do, what is that? What can I potentially start to think about myself? I'm at a disadvantage because of my color. Right. I could act that could that could be a bad thing. I can interpret that in a way to say, well, fuck it, man. I'm destined for all this difficulty in my life because of something I don't I don't have any control over. Now that's not I'm not denying the reality of things like racism and sexism and the the potential opportunities that money give you and the potential opportunities of having a good family, give you and all that kind of stuff. But boy, on an individual basis, what does that fucking mean? I can look at Adam, right? If I'm an, if I'm, if I have a victim mentality, I can look at Adam and be like, this underprivileged guy grew up in a poor household, had a difficult childhood, blah, 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 blah. The reality is I know Adam and I know that that's part of why he's so successful. Was it, is it, did that make him underprivileged or is that his privilege? Did he view it in a way that empowered the fuck out of him? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, think about that, right? So it's, it's a very, it's a very scary thing that's starting to happen where we're starting to, we're starting to blame things on uncontrollables and we're disempowering ourselves as a result. The whole fabric of this revolution of Western society, which, you know, I'll say arguably just to be a little bit politically correct, but personally, there's no fucking argument that Western society has proven to be, if by most metrics, the superior philosophy uh, that, that we know through all of recorded human history. On most metrics, equality for women, equality for minorities, prosperity, uh, the ability for people to have free thought, free religion, free speech, like all these things that we take for granted now, like that is something that developed in Western society. And what it was based on was this philosophy of each individual has a has these inalienable rights that nobody should be able to take away from you. In fact, we'll create a government small enough, big, big enough to protect that, but small enough that it won't infringe upon that. That was the that's the basis of Western society. So to believe in that, but also along with that comes it's your life. The burden of your life is on you. That comes with a lot of responsibility. And then people accepted that. You know what I'm saying? Like if you look at the creation of of this country. For, for quite a bit, for most of American history, we our borders were, you wanted to come to America and be an American? You're welcome. Come on yeah. in. Come on in. Sign this paper. Here you go. Nobody's going to give you shit. Nope, you got to build it for yourself. Together. But people like ex- accepted that, worked together, and did some remarkable things. Still today, you see immigrants come to this country. Look, ain't, there isn't anybody fleeing America in fucking homemade rubber tire boats to go to places like Cuba. It's the opposite. It's for this opportunity, but with it comes responsibility. And if you talk to any of these motherfuckers coming over here and sneaking over to this country and almost drowning 
by trying to cross oceans or, you know, break laws and, you know, go climb under, you know, walls or whatever. You ask any of these people if they're coming here for free shit, and maybe some of them are today, but for the most part, they're like, no, man, just give me a chance. Let me take this responsibility. I don't, I don't need you to do anything for me. Just give me a fucking chance and I'll go for it. And the victim mentality is like, boy, that's the opposite of that shit. And I wish people could see that. Like, I wish we could see that this is just a, mm. it's a big problem. The thing about, I love a lot, I love about fitness so much is if you really get into fitness and health, like oh, really so deeply, parallel, so many mm-hmm. parallels, you, you start to accept that. You know what I mean? If you really get into it, I'll t- you, you, here's the funny thing. It's atrophy. A greater percentage of entrepreneurs and those type of thinkers that believe in personal responsibility, a greater percentage of them work out consistently. And I think the reason is because they take that personal responsibility. And they're like, look, if, if I want to be fucking, if I want to be fit and healthy and have energy, I got to fucking do the work. Got to make the effort. I got to make the effort. Yeah. And then people who do that see the benefit of that and then start to apply that to the rest of their life. That's one of the reasons, one of the things I love so much about it. But the victim men- mentality is just getting. It's getting crazy. It's like that. Per- it's like people suing who sue McDonald's for being obese. Yeah, you didn't know that. No. Oh yeah. yeah. Seriously. There's people that sue. There's, I mean, people Did that will sue. Me- mm-hmm. Um, what? that's a good question. I I'm sure. Surprised if some of them won. Well, I'm sure that that was part of the laws that came out later on with why we had to post calories and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's that. Those lawsuits. I would love Doug to be able to Google this right now. That those lawsuits. Um, those happened. And then it was shortly after that. Did we see the? It was mandatory that all uh, restaurants had to be provide their nutritional facts either on their website or on their menu for people to read and see. So that mm-hmm. I believe that's what catapulted. Now I don't remember if they won the case or not, or it caused enough mm-hmm. uproar that that's what ended up happening later on. But it's pretty crazy that people yeah. did that. If you believe that you own yourself. And that nobody else owns you. If you believe that, or at least if you believe that that's the moral belief and that's the way it should be, because you could also make the argument that you're forced to pay taxes and you can't do everything you want to your body or you go to jail. So you can make the argument that the government owns your body a little bit in that particular sense. But if you believe morally speaking, and it's the right way to believe that I own me, this is my body, this is my mind, nobody else owns this, it's mine then you, you have to simultaneously believe that the burden for your, for your fucking life, the burden of taking care of yourself and the results of your life lies on you and nobody fucking else. Yep. Lies on nobody else. You can't believe one without the other. You can't pass it off. You can't. So if you give that up, if you start to believe that you're a victim and that people owe you shit and it's, it's their you know burden to take care of you and their burden to pay you back for your the fact that you're you know that you're oppressed or whatever you perceived or all these different types of things if you believe that then you simultaneously believe you don't own yourself because you don't have that responsibility have you ever met a successful person that has that role i have met successful people who feel guilty for the success and then start to cater to that victim mentality because mm-hmm. they feel so right. they feel guilty for it so then all of a sudden they want to pretend like they you know, like, oh, no, 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 we owe you and whatever. And, you know, <laughs> you know it's, it's, it's really funny. You know, the irony of it is people who believe in what I'm talking about, you, you would, there's always that argument that it's selfish. Oh, you're so selfish. You know, you should help people or whatever. You look at well, the statistics. People who believe that actually give more to charity than people who don't. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That's a fact. Really it's, interesting. That's an absolute fact. Um, remember, like, Justin Wren when he was talking about helping you know the pygmies and helping God, communities I forgot around about that, that. Yeah. a long time yeah it's been a long it's been a minute we should we should see if we get him back at yeah. some point but um it it was such a powerful thing when he started to describe like when they were just trying like the governments were trying to really just drop food in and they were trying to just help and 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 give people everything and access to everything and how it much that fucked everything up in fact, yeah it fucked the the, uh, the the whole economy that they had built between tribes and between people mm-hmm. was was interrupted and now they don't trade with each other and you know and he he had to actually understand like on a deeper level of like how all that affects like cuz he, he really cares cuz he cares cuz he really cares and that's the thing. Like when you hear people say things, like they'll go protest things. They're like, "I care about this cause." Go look and see how they live, 
and then that'll tell you if they really care. Like yes, like like environmental. Well, you don't just fucking throw money at it. No, like environmentalists. Like you have people like, oh my god, I really care about the environment. Really? Do you, Leonardo DiCaprio, with your fucking massive yacht that has a carbon <laughs> footprint that fifteen of my lives will never will never cover? Like. Like, do you really care or do you pretend like you care because it looks good? And there's a lot of pretenders out there. So that's that's what I mean by, you know, that's that's the whole caring side and that personal responsibility. And change starts within you. And I'll tell you something right now. Yes, definitely circumstances can be stacked against you. Yes, there are uncontrollables. But boy, does life fucking suck when yeah. you feel like you can't, when you don't own some of that, when you don't own some of that. It's, a, it's tough but it's also pretty awesome to look in the mirror and be like, okay, my life sucks. And I think, you know, there's shitty circumstances, but I think I have more control over this than I thought of before. And in fact, maybe a lot of the reason why it sucks is because of me. The irony is, as you get older and you go through enough shit, you realize that you kind of want that. You really do. Mm-hmm. Like, and I love, that's why I love the story that you told about uh, the show. Um, Twilight Zone. Oh yeah. When you shared that story, because it's such a powerful, powerful, you know, uh, imagery of that of this guy who's you know rolling dice. He thinks he's up in heaven because he's getting everything that he wants. You know, he's getting beautiful women around him. He's win- rolling craps every time and raking in the money and has anything he wants with the snap of his fingers. Everything just works. Right. And it doesn't take long before he goes. This is awful. Mm-hmm. I, I would have never expected heaven to be like this. Mm-hmm. Well, what made you think that's heaven? Yeah. Yeah, like exactly. maybe, maybe that's what hell really is. Mm-hmm. Maybe hell is actually getting everything you want. And the real beauty and everything that we go through is the fucking struggle. Mm-hmm. Dude, the struggle like, is the, the struggle is the that goal. for a minute, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the, well, uh, look, think about it this way. If, if somebody could, if they could just snap their fingers and be super fit all of a sudden, Will they be? Will they have accomplished or how much would they, they have, care about it? Would they have gotten as many of the benefits as they would have gotten had they gone through the struggle to get there? No, and to I learn don't. all the things. No, no. That's the reason why uh, you, it, you know when we see things like the what's that fucking stomach pump thing that's coming? Oh out? yeah, the, the, that's why we, I know aspire assist. assist. Yeah, yeah, I know when we saw that, it's like right away you freak out because it's just like you know that ninety percent of the people that use that are not. It's not going to really help. No, no. I think I think one of the best things you can do in your life that will give you a sense of power like you've never experienced before, but it, it does require a little bit of pain at first, but it will give you a sense of power and meaning in your life is to realize that for the most part, your circumstances, you were, you're the one that caused most of these circumstances, or at least you're a part of them, or you could have made decisions that could have changed them. And realize this, realize that even if that's not true, even if regardless, your life is going to be a particular way, which state of mind do you think will feel better to be in? The one where you feel empowered or the one where you feel like you're helpless and you're just fucking floating with the wind and I'm, everything, I'm, like it's a consequence of shit that I can't control. Right. They've done studies on this where they've had people in these situations where they'll give them a little bit of autonomy or perceived autonomy and they perceive the difficult situation is much better because they feel like they have more control over you know what's going on. So victim mentality, here's the thing. Whether you think you can or can't, you're probably right. That's right. And here's the problem. The problem is people spend a lot of money on making you feel like a victim because when you feel like a victim, it's easy to manipulate you. Hell yeah. And when you feel like a victim, the next, the very next thing that they'll promise you, as soon as they make you feel like you're a victim to someone else and the reason why all your life sucks and everything sucks and it has nothing to do with you and poor you and it's everybody else and everybody owes you something and you don't need to work hard and you don't need this responsibility, the next thing that follows is, but I have the answer for you. Yeah. I got the fucking, yeah. listen, you vote for me <laughs> and I got the fix, dude. You deserve this shit that I'm going to promise you. Just vote for me oh, yeah, and here's I why like you deserve guy. it. Right. That's the very next thing. Run as fast as you can from those motherfuckers. <laughs> There's a lot of money being spent those on doing fucking that. fucking wolves. That's right. That's right. Imagine if everybody stood up right now in the, in the fucking world and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to be the change that I want in the world. I'm going to change right. the shit right now yeah, myself. Don't worry about anybody else. That's it. Oh. I'm just going to, I'm going to do what I can, what I can control. To, to improve me and, uh, and, and imagine what would happen. All right. Next question is from Image Writer. Can posing or flexing help with mind-muscle connection? 
Isn't that the definition yeah, of mind like muscle connection? Hundred percent process of that. Yeah, hundred percent. In fact, you know what's crazy is like I always know when I I would have or I always knew when I would have a really challenging client when I'd ask a client to try and flex a muscle like and your back is a classic example of that. Like some people just can't even yeah. flex their back, can it? Can't activate it or their chest and. If you can't flex that muscle, it's really without hard to, resistance. Yeah, just with, intrinsically. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. If you can't flex a muscle without resistance, it's going to be really hard to develop that yeah, muscle. It's hard to build off that. Yeah. And and people and that's a very very great question that you picked there, dude. Because this is what's wrong with what what happens when a lot of people get into working out is they think it's as simple as just going and going through the motions, right? Get on the machines, just go do this, go do that. Oh, I feel the burn. Oh, I'm sore the next day. Well, dude, day. we're so we're so not in our bodies. Right. I used to always laugh when I'd have people like beginners do a tricep press down. That was always my favorite exercise because inevitably if someone's super out of shape and out of their body, like they don't they don't they don't know what they're feeling. They'll do triceps like, whoa, I feel this in my abs. Because the abs is sta- the abs are stabilizing. They don't yeah. even feel or I'll get the how often did you guys get this? What muscle am I supposed to be feeling? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah. they're so like not connected to their body, they can't yep. even feel what they're what they're mm-hmm. working. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's pretty crazy. No, when it comes to mind muscle connection, the ultimate expression of that is being able to activate a specific muscle without. I used any to say this all the time. All working, all working out is is flexion of the muscles. Yeah, that's all working out is. That's all we're doing with resistance, and that can be your body weight. That can be isometric. That can be weights or cables could be anything but all it is is flexing a muscle with resistance and you want to first learn how to flex the muscle right intrinsically before you even add resistance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i think that that's a major mistake that a lot of people make is they just go through the motions and they don't really fully understand like oh i'm trying to engage which is also why i think there's a lot of value in personal trainers because not a lot of people want to go through the work and effort it takes to, you know, oh, wh- how do my lats function? You know, what what are they responsible for? And like, I have to understand mechanics. Like, not a lot mm-hmm. of people fully understand that. So, having a trainer who can look at your body, look at how you move, and then while you go through an exercise, be able to explain to you like these are the muscles that are responsible for doing this. That's what you should be feeling. Yeah, you know, or giving them feedback mm-hmm. by touching them there or whatever. So. Yeah, posing, I think, is a great way to do that by yourself, right? Like, I don't have Sal or Justin touching my back to say, Adam, squeeze your lats when you do this. So instead, I'm in I'm in the mirror, right. and I'm flexing, and I'm trying to activate certain muscles, while, and I'm using the mirror as a, as a feedback yes, mechanism. I just remembered, you know, you get your beginner clients coming in, and half the time, you, you just have to provide that kind of feedback, even if it's like physical touch, you know, so your body actually knows like, oh, this is the area that we're, we're focusing on. Like this is like, some people just don't even have that ability and, yep. and they, you know, they just go through the motions and momentum is carrying them through a lot of their movement practices. And it's just, it's, it's, an, it's disconnect. It's, it's a this massive is, disconnect. This is why some people too can do silly looking exercises and really focus on a certain muscle because they really understand the mechanics Mm -hmm. and the function of that muscle. And so they can use machine. This is also why it's a pet peeve of mine when professionals or people that think they're professionals on Instagram share these stupid exercises that maybe they have the ability to connect and control and, and, control and yeah. do that. But and it's they, silly for like the general public. Like 90% attempt. of the people that are probably yeah. watching, right? right? The kids that are just now getting into working out and they see, oh, look at this. I'm going to turn sideways on this or you know do some weird shit like that's like, dude. Dude, I, I, yeah. I'm going to say something. That Master I, the basics. I just had an interesting thought. I think that, and, and you guys helped me think this out because I think that the if the average person learned to master the classic bodybuilding poses, the ones that are used in bodybuilding competition, mm-hmm. that may be a good exercise in learning. Because think about it and how to control muscles and connect them. Because think about it. Well, if you do vacuum poses. You have to learn. Well, no, I'm talking about the, the classic, uh, like standard mandatory bodybuilding poses. Right. Like a lat spread, right. ab pose, front double bicep, which is different than a back double bicep. That's what a real bo- a bodybuilding routine is literally taking you through. I mean, every, they go through hamstring, calf, yeah. back, deltoids, chest, abdominals. But even just the poses, just even but I mean, having people do the poses. Well, yeah. Could, well, if you're doing the poses, you're having to activate and flex those muscles yep. and you're learning to engage in that. There's a lot of value in, in the ability to wow. do that. Yeah. I mean, a I lot. can actually see some value. Do you guys think? Because I can see some it's value. It's like almost an assessment 
Yeah, or right. or not even an assessment, just like you know, people aren't interested. They're not interested. Now that being, Taylor really wants to do this. Now that yeah, being said, <laughs> now that being said, as a trainer, it's easier for me to teach that with a tool or feedback like weights. Sure. So telling somebody to intrinsically activate and do that is very, very difficult. It's just mm. like us trying to correct posture and why our zone test is done against the wall. I use the, the wall. You it's don't, need a, you you don't need a wall there. You don't need a wall to check somebody's upper cross syndrome. Not no, if, no, no. Yeah. They need to feel that. They f- need to feel that. So I can say your wrist, your elbows, your nodule of your head, your low back, feel all those points. That yeah. should be against the wall. Oh, you can't. It's not against oh, the wall. My head's not even close. You're oh, deviating. Fuck. Right. So yeah. they can tell that other. But we don't necessarily need that. But they do. But they need that feedback. So the only downfall of. I would never teach somebody posing before I taught them how to train because training I can I can get you to connect to muscles by using the weights mm-hmm. yeah. easier than well, I can. Well, how would you teach a beginner how to do like a you lat would, spread? They would. wouldn't even know what the fuck no, that like. You know what's funny is right. so I saw this this is crazy. So you just gave me a, a funny memory right now. Uh, when I first started hanging around all the bodybuilder guys and stuff like that, when I was starting to compete and hanging out with all the guys that are coaching and coaching the posing and doing stuff, I could see the guys and a lot of times their physiques represented it. They, they just, to me, when I would look at some of these athletes that were getting into competing, I, I would look at a physique and go like, you just, you have no business competing right now because you just haven't even started to build a good foundation. Like why try and be competitive about it? Like keep building your physique. And part of the reason why some of these guys just didn't have physique set is I could see the way they went through their posing routines. That they, they had could, no control. They huh? could have no control of the right muscles. You know, coach would be like, flare your lats or flex your lats, and they just they couldn't do it. You know, they couldn't figure out how to do that. I'm like, here you are getting up on stage and competing, you know, trying to get and, and pushing yourself at a competitive level, and you haven't even fully mastered the basics. Like, I consider learning to flex every muscle a basic Mm-hmm. A basic skill set that you should. I consider. Especially com- if you're competing. I consider competing, you being a competitive athlete like a professional. Right. Yeah. That so you should not be. I mean, that's putting the cart before the horse for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, you absolutely want to under fully be able to flex and activate every single muscle mm-hmm. intrinsically before you're going to push the body yeah. to crazy limits. And I can see a lot of value in, especially if you're in in hypertrophy training or if you're training for aesthetics in following up a set with flexing that particular muscle and squeezing it and holding it for now there, I've a seen, period of time. I've seen studies around that. Um, I don't know how much I... Now, I don't know. I'm not talking about... I'm, I'm just saying in terms of the connection, especially for weak body parts. You know, uh, Ben... No, before, I agree. I agree with yeah, you. Right. I agree with you. But I, I'm just saying that I've seen people take some studies like that and they've... Again, they take something and then they try and... Make it look more important than it really is. Make it more important than exactly yeah, what it yeah. really is. I see value in that for But, you sure. know, ben, ben Pikulski made an interesting point a while ago on our podcast and he said, you'll, you'll always notice somebody who has a weak body part that they have trouble or it's, it's, it's not strong and it's fully contracted position. So when it's fully shortened position, it's probably not very good. And you know the old old school bodybuilders used to talk about Arnold. Used to talk I about wish this all I time. wish I heard that. that. I wish I heard that from a guy like him 10, 15 years ago when I was training lots of people, so I could be looking for that more now. Yeah, because that's a very interesting. Oh, I'm going back in my role. So am I. I'm yeah. do, I've been do, I'm my, and myself like evaluating yeah. everything, going like, hmm, that's interesting. Is he right there? Like, hmm. and I do remember when my chest started to develop more. Like, was I doing like, hmm, that's a really yeah. interesting point. And I I don't have enough data to. I mean, I have enough data to pull from, but I wasn't looking for those things at that time in my life when I was training, it would be interesting to go back there. But I I definitely think that he makes a fucking mm-hmm. very good argument for mm-hmm. that. And I see a lot of value in that. If you're so if you're listening and you have an underdeveloped muscle, say the calves, your chest, whatever it may be, think of that muscle in the the shorted contracted position, whatever that is. So if it's yeah. your calves, it's when you're all the way up on your tippy toes. If it's when you're doing your chest, it's when your hands are together and you're squeezing your chest together. And how strong are you in that fully? Yeah, yeah and I would think I would think like after your set or before, probably before your set, you probably want to connect to the muscle first. Is to squeeze the shit out of that muscle in the shortened position, really connect hard to it, and then go do your exercise. And that should help you connect a little more. And in fact, when I train clients, I did do I think versions a, and variations. Of I think that. I would think a heavy a heavy negative would be really beneficial too is to get in the fully contracted position with assistance yeah and then resist it in that position oh wow that's a lot of muscle damage though man oh Ooh, it would, yeah, yeah that'd be yeah. a great way to do it that think, tears the fuck out of muscle. think think about doing yeah. that that would be a great way to, to you do look, that you look confused taylor could this be like a youtube video <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could no, i'm we could, serious yeah. yeah we could do a youtube video on mm-hmm. something like this i feel like that'd be really cool weak body part how to bring up weak body parts 
Brilliant. Yes. That's a good yes. idea. Yes. I came up with Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Next question. Yeah. Get used to it, Taylor. Think, that is it. I think that is it. Hey, you know what's funny? Get these people their episodes. Well, no, this is live. Well, no, dude. Our, you know what's going. funny is uh, uh, another thing that was shocking and strange to me that I heard a lot of at the seminar yesterday, or not the seminar, the, the event yesterday, was people were coming up and a lot of people didn't even realize we had fucking social media. Like uh, yeah. platform, what a, a lot trip, of people huh? are like, "Oh, I don't know you're on Instagram." Mm. Believe it or not, so I am going to say this: we all have our own individual Instagram accounts. All of them have different information. They all reflect our own personal flavor and personality. Where they're super easy to find. And memes. Yeah, mine. They're super easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Doug is Mind Pump Doug. And Taylor is Mind Pump, Mind Media. Pump Media. And he's Mind Pump Media. Check us out. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>